Hold on. I kind of said it wasn't going to be recorded. <laughs> Wait. Hold on. <coughs> Hang on. Hang on. I don't know if this is being recorded. Because I need I need this to... Oh, you know what? I have a different avenue I can use. It's fine. Okay. Sorry. Moment of panic. <laughs> Hi, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to already chaotic episode oh. of Films and Fandoms with Kaylee. Oh, my lord. You knew this was going to happen. Yeah. Oh, because I want to hit the go live button on the thingy, and then it said it wasn't going to be recorded unless I, like, saved up space i was like oh shit it's not gonna get recorded i'm like wait i can just download it off another thing it'll be fine so all right continue it all right all right so as i said welcome oh, to another <laughs> welcome to another episode of film savannah's with kaylee and once again i am joined by alex <laughs> Hi. And today we are going to be told talking. you something was going to happen. Uh, yeah. I yeah. Oh, we got. So what are you drinking? Orange soda. And I have pretzels. Sweet tea. I bought this. I bought this at my last shopping trip at Walmart. It's got sweet tea in it. And M&M's. It could hold up to 32 ounces, which for those adults, it's like a whole bottle of wine. So. <laughs> That's literally like a <laughs> mini pitcher is what that is. It hilarious. is. But yeah, I literally have pretzels. <laughs> which that is a leverage joke. And the orange soda. Orange soda is part of it. It kind of goes hand in hand. Yep. Orange soda and pretzels. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I kind of specified food is because today's episode we're going to be talking about. Oh, got about my ticker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. It's been a long this, week this, for this me. Happens. This this happens because we when we get together our chaotic energy together like this is evidence of that <laughs> all right so <gasps> oh man i can feel the, the heat in my face getting worse because <laughs> i'm blushing yeah so before i get into what episode we're doing i'd like to thank our parent company nevco.org our electrical consultants westpasystems.com and you can check out my website, kaylasantelacting.com. So, <laughs> back on track. I am once again joined by Alex. And today, <laughs> we are going to be talking Almost Paradise, Season 1, Episode 3, Refill Soup for the Soul, which is why I was mentioning food earlier. <laughs> Because this episode has a lot to do with food. Yeah, if the title didn't give that away. <laughs> yeah. And as you can see, my room is a tad bit of a mess. But that is because I am packing. Because I'm going to be moving into my first apartment. So, <laughs> which is why it's a mess. And also, I have a fan going. Because it is... 74 degrees which doesn't yeah. sound hot but it is yeah and i, I can hear my TV. going too you see i can hear the tv so <laughs> i don't know turn if you down. turn it down <laughs> or turn it off or whatever all right so yeah refuel soup for the soul 
Oh my god. It's been a long week for me, y'all. <laughs> All right, so summary. Yeah, I at least know that, so. <laughs> yeah. Of course, it's going to be a little, a little crazy. Yeah. But come on, it's us. Of course, it's going to be yeah. crazy. Yeah. And I'm eating caramel lemon M's. So, yeah. All right, summary for refill Here. soup for the soul. So when Alex discovers that a gang is shaking down local food vendors, he goes undercover and realizes the implications for Cebu are much worse than he anticipated. The director for this episode is Francis De La Torre. The writers are Ty Freer, Nick Keach, and Eddie Quintana. So I like how we get like time like we get like the time jump and then we get like the like we go back so that's the first i think we've done that before one of these yeah it kinda, where we start at a point and go back yeah it kind of when i first watched it it kind of threw me for a loop starting with a time like a uh flashback almost immediately Back in the time, well, and then it's fairly a present. flashback, but uh, yeah, kind of in a way where it's like back then before you get to present day, and it's like at first I I was like, what the heck? So I had to back mm -hmm. it up and watch that part again. Even going back and rewatching it, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I started over again, <laughs> and then I figured it out. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Sorry, I'm but trying to just, pull up the Twitch stream or Twitter stream. Yeah, but just the writing again was incredible. It was. I mean, and, then again, like all of the episodes are really well wit written. I can't talk. <laughs> and so, what I actually or right, we're right, start we're gonna start off with the opening for this episode. So we open this episode at the Cebu Capitol building on election day. And we see Governor Rosales played by, and I may butcher this, so I apologize if I do, Zaza Padilla. I think that's how you say her name. But she gets out of her car and is walking to the building. And when she gets inside, her assistant hands her like a baker's box as she heads towards her office. As she's walking, we see a man who we find out is her assistant walk past her, reminding her she's supposed to be avoiding sugar. This is why I like Rosales here. Rosales uh, hands the box over, quipping he's worse than her doctor. And the assistant also reminds Rosales that she said she'd fire him if he let her have another Shakoi. Which, a Shakoi is a Filipino donut that is, it's like twisted and then fried and coated with sugar. So, yeah. I looked it up and I want to make it. It looks so good. Uh, I, was half, I was tempted to make, I was actually tempted to like make some Shakois before. Make a shakoi before, yeah. The we went live that I and then like it, try it on air. And but the I never did. The recipe that I <laughs> looked up, uh, it yeah, it it varies uh from like variation of recipe. But I have the recipe saved, so I could try to make it. Mm. It it's almost like a sweet, really sweet cornbread. Is what it looked like to me. Mm. Um, kind of, and it, it has that, it, was it like looked like flour yeast and the one i found yeah and then it has like crap ton of sugar and stuff like that with like coconut milk and mm -hmm. all of that in it depending mm -hmm. on what recipe you use um but yeah it looks really good yeah in short it sounds very good <laughs> so Zella says that if the election goes south they could both be out of a job by end of the day so she's going to eat her feelings and her assistant and her blood sugar are going to have to deal with it. So, 
Jeez, that's heavier than I thought it was going to be. This freaking... I don't even know what the hell to call it. <laughs> so Rosales heads inside her office, sets the box on the table, and heads to her desk, eating a shakoi, Sit and says, this campaign's going to kill me. But you know, as soon as they say that, it, I was like, it's oh. kind of... It's kind of obligatory it, yeah, it's that like, a gun gets pointed kinda, at her. <laughs> it's kind of like is what basic, yeah, it's basically like they strike the match and throw it. That's what happens with basically, that. Yeah. That, that, that word play that it, they're striking that match and then tossing it under the gasoline and that's when you know yeah, something bad's going to happen. It's kind of like film. Later. Yeah. It's like film yeah. rules. It's also like, I don't know, media, like every time they say, like, like I'm going to be right back. And it usually means they're not coming back. Like, that's just film rules and yeah. how that trope goes. <laughs> it's like, you kind of know something bad's going to happen to where they might not be able to come back in full capacity or they're not coming back at all, sort of, mm -hmm. character-wise, I mean. Yeah. But... It's just it's one of those film said, things, those film uh, yeah, it's, tropes. And, yeah, it's like the... I would say it's more of like a film technique with writing that, yeah, like, yeah. you know that gut feeling that something bad is mm -hmm. about to happen within the next little bit that is yeah. going to pivot the storyline. Mm -hmm. which I really like that they've used quite a bit of that te technique with this writing with all of these episodes, mm -hmm. especially this one, which yeah, the writer did incredible mm -hmm. again. I did, episode. yeah. <laughs> so then, all right, continuing on. So we go to three days earlier and Alex is hammering nails above the door to like his apartment it's like there's the shop in his apartment he's hanging he's hammering nails above there now alex here thought it would be a good idea to by himself pick up this heavy ass sailfish he's like he has like it on his back and it's like trying to climb up a ladder with it. He's grunting a lot because it is heavy. Yeah. But then it kind of like, like he loses the weight distribution. And, and it because like, it's so heavy, it like throws him back. And he ends yeah, up dropping the fish, falling on the floor and breaking it. Which. Now that I finally watched every single episode of Almost Paradise again, to refresh my memory, the sailfish is a Chekhov's gun. <laughs> and if yeah. you recall, my last. Uh, the last podcast episode we did where we talked about the leverage episode the miracle job with the statue being the Chekhov's gun to refresh your memory a Chekhov's gun is a film trope where if you point out something oddly specific that like if it's a piece of dialogue or a person or an object that gun has to go off basically so in this case the sailfish becomes something that is mentioned throughout the series in like various different ways but it comes back at the very end in quite an interesting fashion, I must say. And I don't think I'm ever going to oh, get over yeah. that scene. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. And we will get to that point when we get to that episode. 
<laughs> but Alex sort of just jumps down off the ladder. And picks up the hammer and then uses it to knock over a post rack and then throws the hammer down as his monitor goes off. So, uh, he's not having a good day. Not in the, the slightest. Moment. I felt you bad for him, but, all, but, yeah, but also I was like, uh, well, but considering why you're there in the first place. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's going to be bad. Mm -hmm. So then we see Alex is, like I think, making a chain with the pliers. And you can see, this is the first time I noticed this. I didn't actually go back to the first and second episodes and see if he's wearing it. But in this episode, he wears a particular necklace. You can see the silver chain of a necklace. And we'll go in, into a bit more. In the, in the second in the second one, you can see it just barely underneath his shirt. Oh, okay. I never saw the chain. And but I know what's on it. I know what I that necklace too. is. Actually. It's cool. It was a cool story, but you only see the chain. So, if you want to mention it when we actually get to the point where you can see the pendant. Oh, yeah, I forgot this one. You can actually kind of see it because it slips out of mm -hmm. his shirt briefly. But mm -hmm. uh, this is also because he's wearing shorts in this episode, too. You can see his, we can see his tattoos on the back of his calves. I was barely. not looking at his calves. Because <laughs> there's I a was shot amazed. when he... Yeah, when he turns around to look at Ernesto. Oh well, yeah, because like, outside you can see it. Just Ernesto comes out, in out of his socks. He's the mess, <laughs> and it's like, "Yo, can like, you do it okay?" Dude, bud? <laughs> it's like, "You all right?" And I'm like, I'm in my mind, I'm, I'm just thinking, man, <laughs> like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> he said that in the most sarcastic way possible. It's like, I'm fine. He's not okay. I'm like, I'm like, dude, no, you're not. Quit lying. No, you're not. <laughs> it's funny, because Ernesto's like, like, he points out like this, really? Because, like, that sweat stain on the back of your shirt. And then, like, the postcards all over your shop. Suggest otherwise. But he is <laughs> nice and picks up the postcard rack. And yeah, like, but here's the thing. I when he says that he's like, yeah, you have the postcard rags knocked on the ground. There's stuff strewn all over. You're sweating, and I'm like, in my mind, I'm thinking, thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> yeah. And I think actually when I we watched it, I actually said that out loud. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, like we all know that Ernesto. We're not blind. We can see that there's something wrong with Alex. Court. Yeah. Because Alex is when like, no, don't play detective with me. Like, I invented detective. <laughs> <laughs> like, no the hell you didn't, Alex. <laughs> and I put that there Um, in just a little bit. He does this trick, but Alex calls him out on it. <laughs> and the face he makes too just like literally has me dying because I, I can picture it in my mind <laughs> you know what Mo and I'm talking about don't you I didn't really knit. oh yeah reverse psychology yeah mm -hmm. okay. anyways continuing on and Alex <coughs> And this suggests that Alex take a break and he's got just the thing that cures all kinds of stress. And Alex says the only thing he's got to do is hang this fish. But Nestor's like, no Marlins swim, you know, Mar no Marlins swim in Filipino waters, right? And Alex is like, <laughs> thank you, Ernesto. <laughs> Boy is so done. He is so yeah, done. Like, 
he basically, I'm pardon my French, but he's like, yeah, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> uh, he fine. had that tone. He had that tone of like, yeah, no shit. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But Alex says it's a good, good luck charm. <laughs> and gets up and, and Ness is like, I think it just like being angry all the time. Which, I mean, it's yeah, not entirely it's wrong. Like, true. And it takes a special kind of crazy to do what Ernesto just did by admitting that to Alex's face. He's yeah. got a death wish. <laughs> yeah. And Alex is like, don't, like, don't do that either. I know what you're doing. <laughs> it's like, what am I doing? Alex, Alex says he's doing a very rudimentary Reverse psychology. psychology. They teach Not bad cops with now. boundary issues. Yeah. I was like, Ernesto was using reverse psychology on Alex, and it's like, Alex yeah. calling him out. Ernesto point. <laughs> and the fact that he waited <laughs> no, on yeah, he was sick, calling him trying out. to people light, like, there's the Filipino politeness, but he pushed it too far. A little bit. Mm-hmm. He laid it on too thick. And Alex yeah. got right onto it. Yeah. Well, I mean, since when has Ernesto been like, you doing okay, bud? Never. <laughs> since when has Ernesto ever done that? To be fair. Never. Well, okay, so. except when he was in the hospital. That was it. He was concerned, but not like this. Going out of his Which way episode? to check on him. Wait, which episode where he's in the hospital? <laughs> the last one? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Do you, I you remember forgot. now? I couldn't like remember has- if had Ernesto like, said anything, just making a comment about how Alex is going to be high. <laughs> yeah. Because it gave him the good shit. Mm hmm. Alright. He was like, oh, that's yeah. later. <laughs> Alright, that's later. So, Ernesto like, points out, like, I thought you were under the impression you were trying to change. Or, I was under the impression you were trying to change. Looks like you're still doing it. <laughs> And it's just like, this will help. Come on. And Alex reluctantly follows him. Like, if there's any chanting, I'm out. And I was just like, what have you yeah, done? He, he he can't can't chant it? Which, he is that a librarian's like, reference? Yes. I knew it. It is. I, I, I thought it was, but I didn't write it down. But I, I saw it. I was like, wait a minute. That sounds familiar. And then I thought, oh, son of a bitch. Damn it. Damn it, Jean! <laughs> Literally, he snuck it in there, and I didn't realize it until you mm-hmm. said that. And I was like, "Wait a minute, that is a library." Because I'm assuming there is chanting in the librarians. Yeah, there was in an episode, and Jake Stone said that exact phrasing to Baird, and she just like, I don't know, D- maybe. <laughs> you trying to be sneaky? We're on to you. Yeah, shame you on you. Get... <laughs> Name you also. Or, yeah, yeah. You can't get one by us, Gosh, Dean I, Devlin. I, I hope he doesn't. We know your this. tricks now. I... We know your oh, tricks now, Dean. <laughs> I really hope he does not see this because I will. I will die because I'm already blushing. And we also get an extra long shot at the sailfish, which. Goes into the idea that this selfish is Chekhov's gun. It's like, nah, that thing's gonna be important. At some point. Yeah. Which it kind like... of does in two ways. Because, like, at the end of the episode, it comes back, and then, like. Yeah. Yeah, because they like, look keep up getting, for a day. <laughs> yeah. Like, pointed out throughout the show. Mm-hmm. Because. And then we figure it, out. Uh, what the hell there's a reason it's so heavy and uh mm-hmm. 
why Alex brought I it all the way. I didn't see it story. coming when it was when it's revealed later. I wasn't. I didn't see mm. it coming. I kind of forgot. I was like, why the heck did you have oh, Should I say what it is? Let's wait until we get to that episode. All right. So we go. It's unexpected. Let's just say that. Yeah. It's unexpected. Uh, the one freaking line from that episode. It's something Walker <laughs> this way comes. Is It's the season finale. Mm-hmm. Well, it's freaking comes out of the gift show. <laughs> yeah, it needs a ride. <laughs> they knew what he was doing with that one, too. I know. And just the way that he was, like, holding it, I was like, it makes me think of that Twitter post. It's like, this is how you hold a shotgun. This is how you hold a key. <laughs> Oh, wait, I'm you know, sorry, what? I will never, it's like, this is how you hold a shotgun, this is how you hold a key, <laughs> like I that, can't. and he's like going like this, because they're talking through, walking through where he starts firing off the, sh- the shotgun round, and starts blowing crap up, oh. walking through the that town strip with the gangsters, that's when they were walking through, and there's like one where he's like this, like holding it up. And then it goes like that. Wait, and it's like, this is how you hold a kitty. And then you hold a <laughs> No, it was like an edit that a fan did by taking photos. They Dean photoshopped it to say that. Oh. And he posted it on his, on his Instagram. Oh my and god. How did I miss that? I was dying laughing. Alright, you'll have all right, send it to me. S- See if you can send the post to me. <laughs> As all right, I'll continue on while you do that. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, okay. Shit, I'm laughing. So we're back at the police station. We see Kai's walking into a compo's office, saying like like he wanted to see me. Compo then asks which campaign pr- poster she prefers, and basically the only difference between these two campaign posters is that. One is on the, or like the one has a compo, like shoulders up, like more forward. And the right one has like his arms crossed. So it's like. Yeah, well, there's one where he's kind of like, like doing a battle stance, kind of where his arms are like this at his side, kind of. And then, yeah, and then he's, then he's back got like more. Arms crossed. Yeah. Which is kind of hilarious. Okay, and, now I can't, I can't get that picture out of my head. Oh my god! <laughs> Kai then tells him the left one, and a compo agrees as he comes around the desk. And Kai asks if like that's all, and a compo tells her to sit down. He shuts the door, and as Kai sits down, and a compo tells Kai he didn't call her just to talk about his campaign for a governor and he tells Kai she's a good detective one of the best in the department Kai thanks him then a compo reveals he chose Kai for a special mission for him and I immediately went oh crap yeah (laughs) because I just knew something bad was Mm -hmm. gonna happen or something fishy was going on Mm -hmm. (laughs) pun not intended yeah, but Kai's like getting all excited because she's been wanting an opportunity to prove herself since Alex kind of fucked up her last job. <laughs> yep. And yeah, Kai says she's been hoping for another opportunity and asks if it's a murder case or like something undercover. Sorry, Nakampo sits down and reveals to Kai that he's a son encouraged to, the, to Governor Rosales' protection detail. But, and Kai's and like, her, face, like, her face just drops. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> governor's protection oh, detail. Kai. That's, um... Nakampo's like, That's not what you were expecting. 
Yeah, it's like, that's yeah. someone more junior, is what she says. And I'm like, you did not just say that, that a junior mm. is more, because you're still new to the floor, son. You're still new. Yeah. You've been there for a while, or probably. No, that's, like, like part years. of what's, like. You're still new. It's added to, like, the alarms probably going off, like, okay. Yeah. Like, Akampa wants me to do this special mission for him. Um, as a protective detail for the governor, while I'm working for her opponent, like, something's odd here. Something's odd here. I, I was like, that's fishy. If That's suspicious. Yeah. And then... Which we'll see why... Yeah, in a little bit, like literally, mm. just like a bit later, and I was like, mm. "You couldn't have been more blunt about it, bud." Like seriously, mm. you're gonna do that? And a couple tells Kai that maintaining the integrity of their democratic process is most important to him. Has like a course, and encompasses. <laughs> that's why he Shut needs up. someone he can trust to keep a close eye. On the governor and report anything that might be suspicious and report everything back to him. And then Kai asks if Akampo wants her to spy on Rosales. Akampo gets kind of defensive and is like, just because I run it against the governor doesn't mean I forgo my responsibility to keep her safe. Because, like, yeah, but. And Kappa was like, it's excellent, so you'll do it? I was like, I will. But like, she's like, yeah, she's trying like, to... like, all right, all right, you can go. And like, all of it, like, kind of shoes her out. <laughs> and it kind of does. And like, yeah, he kind of like says, okay, well, you, you agreed to it, so okay, you can leave now. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, why are you in such a big hurry to get her out of your office? But before she leaves, Ocampo tells her to keep it between them. And, like, she just nods and heads out. But, like, you can see as she goes out, she's, like, you can see, like, on her face that she's, like, putting the there's pieces something. together. Yeah, like, she's like, yeah, there's something not right here. There's something... I don't like going yeah. on. Yeah, something's setting off my instincts. Like, something's not right. So, yeah, I was like, oh, that's suspicious. I don't like. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm like, hmm, why, why is he pushing it so hard, too? And then we figure out yeah. why. Yeah. It just kind of blew me away. Mm-hmm. So then we head over to the Cebu Street Food Village. Oh. <laughs> I found it. I found the pictures. Uh no, send one. it to me. Send it send it to yeah. me. Yeah. I'm gonna send the I'm gonna send the screenshots right, to send, you. So I can see it. Yeah. All right. So Cebu Street Food Village where Ernesto is walk with Alex talking about how people come from all over the world come to sample Cebu's amazing street food, and it's a source of great pride for the community. Which, I must say, it's pretty cool, because you don't often see this with um, any sort of, like, movie or TV show or film where the location acts as a character. Yeah, so heavily like this does like especially like this said, one yeah because of how they incorporated the street fair that was actually going on when they were filming this episode i think it's what i found out oh <laughs> you're looking God. at the photos right <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> jeez it looks like that... it doesn't it <laughs> oh my god <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, 
Uh, oh my god. Anyway. You are very welcome, by the way. Uh, thanks. Now you won't be able to unsee that, will you? Nope. I, I look really freaking weird with this because it's so damn big. Yeah. Anyway. And what is also cool about having it set in Cebu is that um, Dean Devlin was that, which I must admit I'm kind of when I had first heard of like Dean Devlin and I was like, um, when I first got into Leverage and I first heard the name Dean Devlin, I had no idea that Dean Devlin is actually half Filipino. See, I had that Wait. same reaction too. I was kind of like, what? And then he goes on to kind of I mean, explain this, a little bit. It's cool. Yeah, this is kind of like, kind of bad on my part. Because I probably I should not have assumed this, but like I kind of assumed he was like just white, <laughs> like because I hadn't seen any pictures or I had no idea who Dean Devlin was before I started watching Leverage. Then I think I was like watching uh some behind the scenes stuff for Leverage and. I saw him, and I was like, oh, he is not white. Okay, cool. Yeah, like, <laughs> the fact that this is kind of honoring uh, his heritage, which is incredible. Yeah. Which, it, it, yeah. when he, he talked about, about that in the Facebook Live. Yeah, and you can see him light up when he says that, which I thought was yeah. cool. And it was just very subtle with him. Like, yeah. you can't really tell, but at the same time, you can. Yeah. I'm actually cold. <laughs> yeah, my AC is running right now, so I'm, like, freezing. I'm putting on the jacket. So I am, up. like, sweating. I'm freezing, okay? Uh, I mean, Steve Devlin is half Filipino. So that did in the um the facebook live because i found i did watch the facebook live that went with this episode because basically after so it's kind of weird because originally the episodes first aired back in 2020 but what's interesting is they filmed this in like 2019 but that was also when lockdowns happened, so they had to like finish filming. Yeah, because like, they had and just then get everyone like, home. Right, literally, I remember Christian telling this story. They literally, right when they got to the airport and got into the terminal, that's when they shut down everything. Yeah, like, literally that night, as they were flying, but they didn't out, have they time to edit anything. Yeah, so like. Hat, like part of like the sound mix, and I think Dean Devlin did. Yeah, like he, he ended up doing the sound the mixing in his because, um, grant because um, this was like right when everything shut down, so like no one was going anywhere. Yeah, like he so he actually said that he recorded it in his like home so, like, office or something. Yeah, like. <laughs> Oh, like the ADR stuff. Yeah, like, was like done. Yeah, like, done lines yeah. to like Christian and yeah. Art and everyone to yeah, do so their ADR what... dialogue. And then like yeah, email him the audio file so he can like. Yeah, that that's why uh, the singer wasn't the actual actor; it was Christian. Because the audio for the, with the, the guitarist, August Crow. Austin, August Crow, yeah. Yeah, that, that was 
they did that because Christian actually sang over that. He's like, yeah, I have to lower my voice. <laughs> lower than what my normal register is to disguise it but like i picked it up right off i'm like wait, wait a minute he i know did that voice part. uh he did the the singing uh the concert part of it um and then when oh he, my god yeah and I then when that. they do the the duo the duet on the beach yeah he's literally just singing with himself <laughs> oh my god i didn't <laughs> I know found that. that out I, yeah no, but that just watched, shows how like how much like effort went into this because like yeah they there was like no marketing for this either very little and like there was like very little marketing well because originally they aired and so they were like pumping out like editing episodes one like as it was airing yeah (laughs) yeah like because they didn't have time to get any of it done before lockdown happened, but they still wanted to like get the show out. Yeah, so I actually they aired admire the episodes on WGN America. Yep, before it went to a news network. Before it like, and they were still like getting international, um, broadcasting rights. Yeah, like as it was I airing. Looked, I actually looked forward to seeing the little. The little W, like, uh, almost paradise thing pop up. And then it would say, stay tuned for the Facebook Live after the show. And join the cast and watch it again. <laughs> Literally, it had that. And I'm like, Yeah, because really? right That's after the episode would air, which is what I was watching, is, like, right after the episode aired, they'd go live with, like, it was, like, Dean, Christian, Christian. Sam. He's also the executive producer for this, too. And I like the fact that Christian had played a role in helping with like casting the character stuff. He helped mm-hmm. cast the role for Sam's character. He actually read with Samantha Rochelle. I didn't know did that. Opposite. Yeah. Yeah. They read literally on the day. He's like, Yeah, I read my part as Alex and then she read for Sam and like one other person and we did a chemistry read that day. And I was like, <laughs> So it's <laughs> so it's kind of crazy to think that like this show like barely made it out there, barely. Because and like that it still as like put good as well put together as it is. But yeah, because like they couldn't do anything so in the electric yeah, entertainment you, office. Yeah, because they, they was could at do the like the of bare COVID minimum. But, like they, the bare minimum is what they could do. But the fact so they that they had to like around it. I think they had to like steal software from the office before like they weren't allowed to go in yeah, there anymore. They they had to <laughs> and take it home with them. Said that they, so yeah, they, like they downloaded it onto like a like a, a flash drive or something, is what Dean said. And he's like, Yeah, I had to transfer it over to a laptop to get to do like the editing. So, and like all they'd of that send crap. like part of it out to like one crew member. I think there was one one like Serbia or something like that. Like it was just yeah. a bunch of random places and they had to send like ADR stuff to Christian so he can do like his dialogue. Uh, yeah, like the voiceover kind of like that and then send it to this other person to like mesh and then together send and it then, like to Dean so we could yeah, like mix they basically, it all together. Yeah. They patchworked it together to get it to work, which I thought. And it's really amazing cool. that it's still put that it, like works. I know. <laughs> so that was incredible. Round of applause to everyone. Just round that of was applause awesome. to everyone. Double thumbs for up for that. that somehow was, that awesome. getting this show out. That's but I must my, also I, say I call that I I call that some TV magic right there. <laughs> that is literally TV magic. And also Kaniacs because with I I gotta give I gotta give a round to the Kaniacs. I gotta I gotta give yeah, a hand with, clap to without, the Kaniacs. Without his support system of the Kaniacs, this show would not have survived. It would as not. Long as it, did. <laughs> it would, it would not. have died after the first season. Literally, it would have died. Mm-hmm. But it's so cool that like because 
the Caniacs for like that's why Redemption came back too. Yeah, because they loved the characters, they loved Christian, and they loved how Dean made these characters and come like, alive. Yeah. That's why Redemption came back, and we mm-hmm. finally got a season six. We did get a season. Now we're getting <laughs> a season seven. I know. And they, the fact that they just now surpassed the original OG by 23 episodes is yeah, incredible. They, they actually are done shooting the 100th yep. episode. Yep, and they had a I party. <laughs> they did they have a party. party. <laughs> Where they had glass. I, I uh, wanted one of those cupcakes. Large cakes. Cupcakes were good. But I made this. I made this joke when I first saw the thing. That there were like two large tables of drinks. Sorry, I'm eating m M&M m and that's why I'm chewing weird. <laughs> but there were two large glasses of drinks. Now I imagine there were a lot of cast and crew there. <laughs> but somebody they I'm pretty sure they had to have had a good time yeah <laughs> and honestly I was half expecting somebody to post something about being hungover <laughs> <laughs> well well I mean it's, he's fucking Oklahoma so of course he's gonna be hungover or uh, or Aldous or Aldous Aldous either one. <laughs> uh, um, oh, plot twist! What if it was Bethy? <laughs> I mean, it might have been. I don't know, but no, because that Maybe. reminded me of how in this Facebook Live, because <laughs> she was drinking a freaking Madeo yeah. light beer. And because they had fans on, that's got a couple questions. And one of them ha- was drinking out of a bottle of Jack. <laughs> and he smiled. And he, that, he like he like looked down and he, like, she was taking a sip as they were taking a sip. And he's like, the one who called her big. He does one of these. He just like he looks down at the bottle in her hand at their in their hand and looks back up at their eyes and smiles. Because I mentioned this story before how he will christian kane would drink from a bottle of jack during his concert great mind you yeah straight out the bottle yeah i did i took shots of straight jack once and i can't stand it i have to have it mixed in with something either pepsi coke or some fruity like uh like cranberry juice or something like that i'm a curse to go i can't find my curse God dang, why can't I find the mine? Hardison, we need your help. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure my mouse just died. Oh no. It didn't. Hold on. There we go. Did the battery just come loose? I don't know where it went. Anyways. So. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> We're not even halfway it's through. It's been a week, dark. y'all. It's been a week. Uh. Okay. So, continuing on. Because we are Lord. not even close. <laughs> So as they're walking through the street food village, Ernesto gets handed a campaign flyer. I was just going to be like, oh, like, they've been plastering these all over my damn gift shop. And Ernesto's like, not a fan of politics. I was just... Alex says, Politicians are like diapers, my friend. They need to be changed because they're both full of. He's about to say shit. Yeah, and then I I wrote that down. This is like shameful. Shameful. (laughs) He cuts him off. 
shameful how so many of the venison <laughs> is now which yeah. I have a funny story about that scene. That was freaking hilarious. And my... and he kind of looked. Christian looked offended when that happened. He's like, "How dare you!" It was like in um, what um, oh. it was um, yeah. I was literally in stitches laughing because I didn't catch that at first. Like it happened so quick, but when I watched it back, I was dying laughing. Because there was a um. A, uh, a scene in my fic Finding Paradise my fan almost Paradise fan fiction Finding Paradise where um my character Evelyn Mahoney in that scene so, um I forget if it's before I think it's bef yeah it's before Alex says his line about politicians <laughs> I have my character say <laughs> And if you've read the book, read my story, it actually makes more sense. But she says, when you've been badly screwed by a politician or by a bureaucrat, when you've been badly screwed by a bureaucrat in both sense of the words, it tends to leave a bad taste in your mouth. <laughs> Literal and figuratively. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love that. Because the literal is because one of her ex boyfriends <laughs> is Agent Zivic from the first episode. <laughs> Jerk. <laughs> he has a very punchable face. And then, yeah, he does. But then the other is because she got is in a similar situation to Alex. Because she got shot. She was also shot by the partner. <laughs> Though the, from that first chapter, another favorite line. The best line, I think. I kind of went all out with the lines. Like, every single chapter has an F-bomb in it. A couple times in some. First. Because the first time I think I actually, like, dropped the F-bomb was when. As... She, um, when they're in the van and I have Evelyn involved in this and or I call her Ev but um at like Zivik's like um uh like you're not gonna screw this up are you and Evelyn's like fuck you and you're off <laughs> and just leaves <laughs> Yeah, she went all. No, I imagine Alex is probably looking at her like, what? "Well, damn, <laughs> that was that." Yep. Kind of like, because if there's the one thing that is common between ZK's characters, and they are attracted to competent women. Yeah. When okay, I will say when that when that scene that you wrote that scene the the way that you did. And like I could picture his reaction in my head. I thought of uh I have the, so many good the, scenes though, like that. Yeah, the it was with my Natasha and Elliot when she calls him out on his bullshit. <laughs> and he's like the hell? What the heck? Hmm. Or like you got the other one. What? <laughs> kind of like the the other one is also from the first chapter shock. of my book Finding Paradise or based on um Finding Mabuai is not only when she tells Alex like this would it be a problem when they're after they leave the hospital she's like this would it be a problem if you had just taken the damn meds like the doc and I told you to now it's like and I and I done told you ain't no way <laughs> and it's she like, gets a look at her face now she's like no stop it. And I was like, you're 48, Alex. Is it really that important? <laughs> <laughs> and when he also, says no, when he, like, when he said that to her, I immediately pictured him going, mm -mm, behave yourself. Uh -uh, no. 
I will right. hurt you. One, one last, one last line, and then I'll continue on because I have no self control here. <laughs> also from the first chapter. Is From it the line that I'm thinking of? Because I think it might be. When they're driving down the... Before they go to meet um, Dio. <laughs> and they're taking off the wires. And they're talking with Divic. And Ev makes it... It's kind of like a top joke. But... Ev's like... <laughs> so demanding. Like... And no wonder why I didn't like sleeping with you. <laughs> or like, it's like so demanding, like something like that. So it was yeah, like, something, something along those lines. And it was like, um, it was like now it wasn't that bad. Like it wasn't that bad. And I was like, oh, oh no. Somebody got their ego hurt. <laughs> like, no. Ah, that's why I slept with women. <laughs> and I literally went, I was like. <laughs> Best I like line right? I have ever written. Yeah, and then I literally had oh, to no. scroll back yeah, over and read that again. That's why I slept with women. <laughs> yeah, I literally had to reread that to get it. And I was like. Okay. I was, yeah, you broke me with that line, by the way. Sorry. It was funny and he deserved it. <clears throat> True. He is a jerk. He has a very punchable face. And I think I told you when I when I said, Can I it's like can I tase him? And you're like, okay, fine. Just this once. Oh, because there's, <laughs> cause there's a bit in the second episode where Evelyn oh, you know, tries God. to salvage the cover with her and or with um Kai and Alex. She's trying to like salvage it because Max isn't buying that like Kai is Catherine. So she partially because I thought this would be funny is why I did this and it did actually kind of make sense. It was like ever like take her shirt off and like just in a bra or she has her pants on at least and then steps outside, puts on a British accent and acts like She's like Catherine's like hookup <laughs> because logically, I would think that like having somebody else call another character or have calling somebody else a name would like cement the idea that like they're actually that person. Yeah, it's a, a, it's a but it also just is funny because then Kai's like, "What the fuck was that?" Now it's like, and what the hell? Like, like <laughs> of course he ignores her until like he puts his hat on. Like we got a date with the most cat there, Nemo. Then he just turns to Al and is like, put on a damn shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and I just just picture her like giving him a shit eating grin. Oh yeah, <laughs> because you know for a fact. She's a total brat. She is a brat oh, yeah. when it comes to Alex. Same with Natasha. She can get away with a brat that. when it comes to Alex. Yeah. Like, they know they know what to do to push the buttons. Mm -hmm. And get away with it. It's hilarious. Because multiple times I have ass pitch pinching. <laughs> Roll seven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they don't follow Roll seven. <laughs> uh Christ. Okay, oh, continuing on. Oh, oh Lord. Lord. Oh. You could read our fix on a U three. <laughs> anyway. And it will explain this insanity that we've been talking about. Yes. So Ernesto basically reveals that all of these vendors have been shutting down. And Alex is, been, is asking, like, what happened, and excuse me. Ernesto says he doesn't know, but it's not good for the neighborhood. And you can see it on Ernesto's face and in his body language, he kind of gets a little bit, like, depressed mm -hmm. talking about it. He's like, whatever's happening here isn't good for this community. So, 
And then Ernesto heads points to a vendor and says it's the crown jewel of Cebu. And the name of the vendor is Bayani Soup Restaurant. And Alex and Ernesto are sitting down at the shop across from each other. And Ernesto tells Alex this stuff's going to cure his hypertension. And his friend Gabriel had diabetes and was cured and was cured after he ate it, which that oh, how did. that works. He sounds like a damn infomercial for soup. His cousin Manny was balding at 19, ate it, it was cured. And his <laughs> uncle Tito, who had uh, intimacy issues, and Alex is like, he ate it and was cured. <laughs> Which is fair. And Bayani comes over and sets a bowl in front of Alex, which Bayani. a big freaking bowl. It was a by the way, decent like, bowl, too. Seriously. Yeah, and Bayani is played by Lou Veloso. He is just the cutest old man. I know. He is he like the like cutest a, old man. He looks like the the sweet, the Filipino version of Mr. Miyagi, honestly. Like, he's the kind of heart. He said you'd be like walking down the street and you'd like, he'd like have like give you food. Like, like or your, he'd grab like, your hand and go pull you into food. a shop to give you food. He'd yeah. like force, like force you to sit down and eat food and then give you like a bunch to like take home or like give you candy or something. And you'd yeah. feel safe doing that. Yeah. Sorry, M numbers were a bad idea. Oh my god! <laughs> this is why I don't eat sugar, people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So Alex or Bayani tells Alex it's because of the special ingredient. Like Alex is like, "What the like? What the hell is it? And what the special ingredient is?" Bayani says it's and the soul it, of the community. It is, is it dead? <laughs> yeah, that's what next after Ernesto speaks at some tagalog. <laughs> and he hands Alex a spoon. Alex take, takes it and he says, yes, two questions. What's in this and is it dead? But Ernesto tells hey. Alex that it is refill soup. <laughs> In the ocean behind the restaurant. What's bad? <laughs> it's funny, as Alex. Hold on. Imagine this is the bull. He, uh, Ernesto. You're Ernesto. I can't do it. No, ju- no do just it. say that it's like refuel soup. <laughs> it's all you gotta say. You can do it. I'm sorry. <clears throat> it's refuel soup. <laughs> <laughs> you, just like, you nailed the look of this guy. <laughs> He's like, he does one of these. Like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah, he <was> like. <laughs> and Ernesto <sighs> says it's dead. Normally, <laughs> Alex is like, eel, eel soup, nor- eel soup, man, like sea steak. And what do you mean normally? Which, um, Riddle he says, Science. He, it's like, when he said that, his his Texan came out full force. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm. Literally, like, I could hear it. Like, he, I can't he get, get over pissed. his freaking, just the way his freaking body, he just goes like, <laughs> he, like, just recoils his, back. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> but weird science fact. That's a little gross. If you skin an animal, like um, frog legs, like if you skin frog legs and you sprinkle salt on it, the legs will start twitching. And it's due to... But it's not alive. It's just the muscle. It's basically involuntary muscle spasms because the way your nervous system works is you need salt to, in order to transfer um, 
the, the messages uh, throughout your body. The nerve signals, yeah. Um, it's kind of cool, though, but also kind of gross at the same time. Yeah. And also, snakeheads will do the same thing after you decapitate them. Huh, I did not know that. Like, you can still get bit by a rattlesnake if you chop its head off. If we're not careful with the decapitated head. Yeah, if you hit it just in the right spot, it won't do it, but. But yeah, weird science fact for you today. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't know that. That's, that's kind of cool that it, it has to do with the salt and the muscles. That's actually mm-hmm. kind of cool. I didn't know that. Yeah. I learned something new and I'm a science geek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah at least I'm pretty sure it's the salt, yeah. And that is yeah, not saying that, like, like consuming salt, salt will, like, this is just for this particular scenario. <laughs> There's multiple reasons for different things, so mm-hmm. this is just for this particular scenario. Don't take what I say as 100% truth. <laughs> All right, so... Vanessa tells Alex to just try it, and Bayani puts his soup, and Bayani put his soup in a special bowl, and it's an honor. And Bayani, like, pushes the bowl to Alex, and Alex just looks like he's gonna pew, because... <laughs> his face, like... Oh, no, wait, oh, is this when he does the recoil? Like, he kind of does one of these, he, like, leans back just a little bit. Like, he moves his chair back just a smidge, but doesn't do the recoil, he's just like... Alex, like, Alex is just like, like, like kind of like the child pick, pick eaters going like I don't want yeah. it and like don't make me. Which Alex is like, <laughs> yeah. like, like I'd, I'd rather have hypertension. Cool. Like look at it moved. Like, just try. You know, what's it, funny dude. is my character during that scene is like Alex. Do I have to treat you like a freaking toddler? <laughs> In my mind, I'm thinking it's like, of course it moved. Just like, because you moved the table, you idiot. Yeah. Yeah, he kind of. No, I mean the that's table. true too. Yeah, when he moved back, he hit the table like <laughs> just barely. Okay, this part is a little bit gross. I must say, just because of the sound. Oh, I know. So. What, I know what sound you're talking about. So Bayani then comes over with a couple of eggs in a bowl. And Alex is like relieved at the egg. Like, all right, I grew up with eggs. An egg, I trust. And he's like cracking the egg as like Bayani watches proudly. Then he takes a bite. (laughs) Like it's a hard boiled egg. And you can hear it's um crunchy. Alex asks why it's crunchy. And uh, Ernesto says it's a uh, it's a blue. And Alex asks what that is, and Ernesto says it's fetal duck egg. And the okay, love you. We do. Sorry. I got busted. <laughs> Come on, mouse. Okay. So I have to keep my mouse off because I don't know how much battery I have left. I don't want to get up and get new batteries. <laughs> All right. So, anyways. And so Ernesto says that it's a that it's fetal duck egg and the crunchy part's the beak, but it's that it's gonna feel strong. Alex all but like throws it back in the bowl. He says he he feels betrayed. And you can hear his stomach's not agreeing with it. Yeah. Yeah, so he just gets up. Can I interject the the fun fact before you go to the next part? Yeah. DK ate three of those things. Three of them. He said, "Get five. that one cake." 
Yeah. Well, in that up to this point, it was three, and then he ate five total. He's like, "Yeah, I ate five of those. Five. And you can see Art laughing. True. <laughs> it was the real balloon. It was like legit. Though I guess like he ate like it kind of. This is gonna sound so gross when I say this, and it's gonna sound horrible, out of context. But he he didn't eat the beak end. He ate the opposite end. <laughs> so there's a little bit of that crunch. But apparently you're not supposed to eat the crunchy part. <laughs> so Dean Devlin, because this is where we're because um Dean had to do some of the sound mixing and so he ended up use becoming a foley artist here. Which don't know what a foley artist is. Basically their job is to make the sound effects so like every time you hear like bones breaking, crunching, hooves galloping, any basically sound effect. is a fully artist using random objects to um make those noises Recur yeah, so Dean Devlin used a walnut breaking and apparently they shut this whole thing in like three hours so not only did he he ate like the five flu <laughs> but then he had to eat the refuel soup <laughs> oh gross Now, to be now, I get that's like Filipino cuisine, but yeah, like for me, between the two, I would rather take the refill soup. Honestly, I'd rather eat the, the soup because I could at least like do the broth. Yeah, and I could like eat like the vegetables and stuff that are in it. I am sorry this. if you're but in, if you're Filipino and listening, and to, you're this, listening to this, I just can't do it. I am sorry. Yeah, I don't I, have the skills I can't for do it. it. I am, a, yeah, I'm American and I'm, I have a weak stomach. Like I can eat spicy crap all day long. I'll, I'll be fine, but I cannot do it. My boundaries. You're more than welcome to eat it yourself, if that is what you like. Yeah, but I wrote Good down on he ate. A, he ate quite a few, <laughs> if I remember right, is what yeah. I wrote down. <laughs> And then I but remember the fact Christian that Christian did it. What, you want to know what Christian's excuse was what? for like actually eating it? What it was says he said, excuse? Uh, because he couldn't call himself a chef if he didn't try everything. That, well, okay, that that I understand. That, okay, that. that's actually fair. Yep. All right, so continuing on. So Alex, like, he gets up and leaves. And he's gonna like. It's pretty oh, obvious he's gonna go throw up. Yeah, and rinse out his mouth. <laughs> but what's funny is Ernesto. <laughs> Ernesto is just shaking his head like white people. <laughs> yeah, he had that like. Uh, Which lately, boy. <laughs> lately, that's what I've been saying. <laughs> Exactly. Like, white people. <laughs> but yeah, the fact, the, the look of annoyance on Alex's face as he gets up and walks off, which is hilarious. And her <laughs> next day, like, smirking. He's like, white people. Oh, such a shame. And I'm allowed to make fun of, of white people because I am white. So that's We can make my... fun of ourselves. Like, mm. there's certain things that us as there white have people been times are not going to where do. I have seriously gone like like I'm like I'm stupid but I'm not white people stupid <laughs> like, yeah I'm my like for me I'm actually not all white I am a little bit Mexican and Native American so it's like at least I'm not like pure blood like white person stupid <laughs> i have my own 
special no. kind of stupid. I've ever heard him. Um, it's like usually like native and like it's like native people on especially it's like a more of a joke on TikTok, but it's like native people and like black people tell you to like if you hear a noise, don't go into the woods to find it. But like a white, a white person, person will go into there. We'll, we'll go out there and chase it. And then there's sometimes yeah. where people are like look. I may be stupid, but I'm not white people stupid. <laughs> like I'm getting, I'm getting my ass back in the house and locking the door. Yeah, it's door. like, yeah. For me, being of a little, having a little bit of native blood in me, probably due to my mom, my birth mom's heritage, I would look out the window and lock the doors <laughs> and just yeah. like go go watch a movie and wait until daylight to go figure out what the heck that noise was. Yeah. Cause that's also like the start of every freaking horror movie. Yep. It is a white person going they where they shouldn't stupid. be, and that's how they end up dead. And it's usually the not white characters that are like, don't follow the noise. <laughs> I mean. Sometimes you just gotta listen. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> all right, so... So, all right, continuing on. You okay? <laughs> yep, I'm just... The way that I'm sitting is uncomfortable. Oh, there oh. we go. So then we go outside the bathroom where Alex is rinsing his mouth out. And we're all assuming he threw up because not only is he rinsing out his mouth, you can hear a toilet flushing. And also later he does say that like it didn't stay down. <laughs> oh, I actually, because remember how I said, oh, Ernest had the look on his face of uh, white people. He actually says that. He's like, <clears throat> Americans or something like that. He's like, oh, white people, and like that's what he says. <laughs> yeah, he just shaking. His <laughs> I have that quoted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then, as Alex is like looking in the mirror, trying to like recover and probably not throw up again, trying to like settle his <laughs> stomach. Yeah, Alex clocks a young goon with face tattoos. Who we only know as face tats. <laughs> Pulling Bayani along. Speaking in Tagalog. And Bayani's obviously scared. But then then the goon, Alex sees that the goon is like. Choking Bayani. So of course. Even puking his guts out. Alex can't leave shit alone. Yeah, so he confronts like, the chef. Or he confronts the goon, sorry. Yeah, that's hurting the shop owner. And the way that he mm -hmm. tells this kid to back off, I like, wrote, he, that like, was is Elliot. a bit back. He, like, yeah, is that a bit was... back and is like, step away from the chef. <laughs> and the he just kind of gives him, he gives him the tats. Elliot eyes. He does. Like, literally, like. But face tats kind of like shoves by on into the ground, and like turns to face Alex like. But when he's on, walking like, over to Alex, I was like, uh, crap. he is literally walking. What did you do? Like he has a stick up his ass, and I'm not even joking when I say that. I swear to God, like he he's walking really stiff, like pretty much, like almost like he a is, puppet, like, pretty much, just hilarious. Like it's like he's on a stick and he's just like moving his legs. It's like a really boring version of like a marionette puppet walking, is what he <laughs> reminded me of. Yep. And, then and in his get... gruffest voice, he's like, it tells Alex to stay, he's like, stay away from this American. And telegraphs his punch. So Alex literally just blocks 
and just and I think like, he like gives him an elbow or something, just knocks him down. But then he's like hunching over and his stomach's still rolling. Yep. It's like, you done, man. He, like Missy yeah, Snake Snoop Yeah, he's, snake, he's, snake, 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 snake. Yeah, he's snake, like snake. like bent over panting and I I wrote that down. It's like you done, man. And he's like the way that he says that, he's like, You done? I need to go like Try I need to go throw part. up. You done? <laughs> it's like you done? No, nope. all right. And the and face tats warns Bayani that this isn't over, and he runs off. So Alex gets Bayani up, tries to help get Bayani up, but asks him if he's okay. But he- Bayani moves his hand out of the way and tells Alex he should have stayed out of it, and he walks away. Alex follows him and it's like I could I could hear the fear in Bionic's voice mm-hmm. when he said that. And I'm like, he's well, only, we find he's out only why. trying to help you. Yeah. But he was only trying to help you, but it only made things. Because worse. I was like, what was, like was I supposed to do? Let him choke you. Yeah, it's like and then doesn't he tell Ernesto what he saw? Or no, Bayani then tells Alex to really make things worse and walks ahead. And he just looks, con- Alex looks confused, but not at the same time. Yeah, he kind of like gives Bayani a little bit of time to get some uh, no. distance. I think. But he doesn't approach Ernesto. At least as we see. Yeah. Because the next scene we see is Bayani's cleaning up the restaurant. And Face Tux walks up to Bayani with um, two goons. One I call big guy. One I call smaller guy. Because I don't think they ever had names. So that is their names. <laughs> I call the smaller one tiny. <laughs> Because that he's small. Yeah, he's small compared <laughs> to the other two. I can't wait to get to that part. <laughs> These are... So, Face Hot walks up with them and tells Bayani he said he'd be back. Small guy and big guy grab Bayani and bring him over. And small guy has, like, a pipe in his hand. And Bayani tries to suggest talking... Face punches him. Well, it's more of a weak slap. Yeah, pretty much. Um, it was more of like an open hand hit, basically. Mm-hmm. But to me, at first glance, the pipe or something, whatever that that guy had in it, the taller one had in his hand, it was like a tire iron. Like a uh, really bent up, really dirty tire iron is what it looked like yeah, at maybe. first glance. Hmm. That's what it looked like to me. But I immediately, when I, when I saw that, like, drop out of his sleeve, I'm like, oh, crap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bionic <laughs> goes down, and they all laugh. Face Tats gets handed the pipe and is hitting Bionic with it. Then they're splashing gasoline all over the restaurant. And Face Tats... Because he has a trail of gasoline from the restaurant to the trail. Which, all right, I'll have a PSA here in a minute once I finish this. But he, like, face tats, kneels beside Bayani, who's on the ground and has been yelling this whole time. Yeah, face tats, he has the match in his mouth and then uses the book to light the match. And then tosses the match onto a trail of gasoline and the rush job runs to the ground and they all laugh. Though face tats props to the actor playing face tats because he somehow made a smile look fucking psychotic. Yeah, it, he did the like the he did like the. It was like a Joker. You know, like the, yeah, the kind of like it's called the Kubrick stare, but with a smile instead. Like he dropped his eyes, 
and look down. Oh, yeah, it's the Kubrick stare. Yeah, which, he did that's that with what you don't smile. know what the Kubrick stare is. Hold on, I'll see if I oh, can that thing is creepy. try and demonstrate it, basically. Here, let me take my glasses off so you can see my eyes better. Basically, is you look down, then you look up. Nope. Nope. Don't do that. All right, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. That. That's the Kubrick stare. Yeah, he basically did that, but with a smile. Yeah. Before he tosses the match. No, PSA. It happened so quickly. The thing with gasoline... And I actually do have some knowledge of this as my dad was a volunteer firefighter. So, when you pour gasoline, it emits fumes, which is why you're not you're not really supposed to store gas in like an enclosed space without proper ventilation. Yeah. And yeah, why also cool. kind of why you're not supposed to start your car in like a garage. Because that's how you get carbon monoxide poisoning. Yeah, the build up the fumes. Yes. So, when you pour gasoline, it emits those fumes, which are also highly flammable. So, if you you do not want to let gasoline sit. If you are going to, because it is almost campfire season, where, at least where I live, it's almost campfire season. You do not yeah, want to let here. gas lay. You dump it, strike, go. Don't let it sit for too long without it. If you let it sit, those fumes, the fumes build, up, build up, even if you're and- outside. Even if you're outside, you get being a, spilled. what's called a flashback, um, fire flashback. ball, which is basically and people can get hurt <laughs> because fire travels with oxygen. So, and with with the gasoline, it because you have those oxygen, fumes circulating yeah. the air all around you. As soon as you strike a match, that match will ignite the fumes. And went back. And I actually know a kid. Who got like second and third degree burns. All over him. Because of that flashback. Because he dumped. And you also don't want to dump gasoline on an already lit fire. Because. Flare up. It'll it'll flare up. And like cause that effect. And you can get seriously burned. So, be careful with fire. Have (laughs) people around. Have lots of water to put out your fire. And also, be careful with using gas. Yeah. And or make sure you have it a water source. Or have a fire extinguisher handy. Whichever. Or Or both. Whether it's like a a five-gallon bucket of water. Or a fire extinguisher handy. To keep by like the lawn chairs or the table or whatever for after you're done. Yeah. And actually, um, another PSA with dealing with fireworks. So, especially with fireworks, you want to, after you die, after you ignite your fireworks, do not put your fireworks in the campfire. There could still be powder inside the firework that has not exploded. And it yeah, will go off that, inside yeah. the fire. And people can get yeah, seriously which, hurt. Yeah. Um, and when I say I burn this, douse it in water. Or um, if the like simplest on, way to on, do on this like, if you have like a lot of fireworks because that's what happens with the July. So you should also be careful because um, anybody with PTSD uh, can get triggered by fireworks. So be mindful of where you're setting off your fireworks. 
And also, once you're done setting up your fireworks, if you get one of those five-gallon buckets, fill it with water. You can toss the fireworks in there. And it'll... And all the unlit gunpowder will just kind of float in the water. Yeah, and it'll be... then it's no good. Yeah, it'll become wet and it won't ignite. Then you can just... Then you can it out put and... it in the fire. Or, or no... Or you could just throw it away. Don't put it in the fire. Don't put it yeah. in the fire. Yep. So yeah, a couple of BSAs. But, uh, but yeah, that brings up with uh, this was an episode of uh, Supernatural because that just hearing about that, it was like they had pasted the inside of like this like little coffin thing with like this petroleum like fire jelly. And it had built up, the fumes had built up inside. And when Jason struck the match, he threw it in and leaned over. And he leaned back just the last second. But it burnt the microphone cover that was like a few feet above his head. Oh my god. And that, that shows you, they should have had it properly vented. So it didn't. Yes. Big old fireball. Which is where pyrotechnic experts come into play and why you should always have safety crew when you're dealing with pyrotechnics yep have someone who's skilled in that be handling the stuff and yes sometimes even with that because they had a a pyro guy on set well with that yeah safety and they didn't people. realize mm-hmm. yeah they didn't realize how much time had passed for the, the fumes to build yeah. up. I'm not using off gas because I'm going to start laughing. Uh, but the fumes to build up from that patrol, that uh, fire jelly. Mm-hmm. So it's basically like a, basically like a propane tank inside of that little coffin. Until Jensen struck that match and threw it mm-hmm. in there. And it was yeah. a big old fireball. Yeah, and also, I'm going to say, with the safety crew... It's important to have safety crew, especially yep. on like on set, because that's what happened with Bre- um, Brendan Lee. It's kind of a famous story, but um, on the set at the movie The Crow, um, Brendan Lee, who is the son of uh, famous martial artist Bruce Lee. Oh, I heard of Brendan that. Lee had was filming a scene for The Crow, and somebody. I forget how it exactly happened, but essentially what had happened was, so usually um, when you see a gun set off in a movie or TV show, it is filled with something called a blank round. And essentially what that is. It's a round without the gunpowder. It, it's a round without the bullet. Yeah. It's around without the bullet and it just has the gunpowder to get that flash. Yeah, the, the, the spark. And then they will do what's called a live round into a non moving target. Yeah. And that's to, the one with the actual full metal jacket with the yeah. bullet. Well, somehow the live, a live bullet had gotten stuck in the gun and it. When they put the half load in, or when they put in the blank round to uh, film the scene with uh, Brendan, the gun went off. And it, because it doesn't matter that the bullet was attached to, like, the casing, wasn't attached to the casing, the, uh, the gases in the force of the gunpowder going off down the barrel of the blank round propelled propelled the bullet out the projectile out wow that's and, why you take your guns people and that is why gun safety is important yeah and you that's why you should always have a firearms expert on set yeah and the bullet killed brendan lee and there's also a reason more recently on the set of rust yeah, Alex Baldwin accidentally With shot that. a live round through oh. a building, hitting mm-hmm. one of the 
background artist. Not, I, think. I believe. He, he, he said. I forget. Like, yeah, I thought it was. I can't remember her name off yeah, the top of my head, but she was one of the It background. is the state police responsibility for checking weapons. Like, that is their job. Yeah. yeah An actor has they, other things to do. They can't always be like, preoccupied. Prepare and stuff like that and double check and all of that. And That's the safety crew's job because they're... Yeah. And so, when she got hurt... No, she... No, she it, had, it went... Yeah, she ended up dying. Initially, I believe it was a yeah. cinematographer, was it? Yeah, cin cinematographer got shot. Because he, because she got yeah, shot. He was, yeah, and he said, "Why was I handed a hot gun?" Exactly, and not told. And that's why there's now a recent movement where um, live rounds are being banned, like blank rounds and live rounds are being banned for, um. Or some studios are not are choosing not to are, use. Are, yeah, they're just gonna do real guns. Uh, with the empty and, like, gun and blank make it rounds. and do it in post. Yeah, they're gonna do it in yeah. post with the flash and all that. Actually, because um, you can use CGI to make a realistic looking gunshot without needing to like jeopardize the entire crew. Yeah, it's like close. Well, it so. And happen. I've never been a fan of guns myself. Like I did grow up around guns, and I did take like a safety hunter, a hunter safety course. But I just, I do not like guns. But, <laughs> like a like, certain character we know. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, it's probably for different reasons. But. But yeah, it's like. I, like I, I know how to handle guns and stuff like that. Yeah. I know. Yeah, to drop the clip and then empty the chamber. Yeah. yeah, before I even do anything, it's like basic safety, and I always yeah. point it like away from myself and other people. Um, yeah, and that's what we were taught in my women's firearms. Uh, yeah, gun fundamental like, class. If you have a gun, get the proper education on like how to take care of it. Yeah, and they have. Like... I have. They have. They have classes. They have videos and stuff online too that teach you what to do. Yeah. And if you don't have those resources, you I can take, go to... I had to take a hunter safety course to get a hunting license, which I never ended up using because yeah, like... I was I was scared of the gun, even though I knew how to shoot it and I knew how it worked. I was still scared of it. So Yeah. Um yeah. it's like take the proper precautions necessary. And if you don't feel safe using it, don't touch it. Let somebody else do it. Yeah. Plain and simple. Which I think would have prevented, like, people at... But there's also, like, so many different, like, scenarios where, like... Because is it possible that, like, the safety people were, like... overworked and like were tired so like they just couldn't it was just human error because they were yeah, like tired I mean, and overworked i mean it happens like uh or even like in the props department and stuff like that yeah like when so there's just a lot of different use, things yeah it's like accidents happen because it's it's if humanity's involved accidents are gonna happen no matter what mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. but that makes me, it makes me think of, uh, the, season, uh, Supernatural season 15, episode seven fight scene with Christian and, uh, Jensen, where Christian, uh, breaks the pool cue and Jensen goes like that. But when he went like that, he got cut by the splinters on his face and on his neck. Oh, yeah, so he, it's like, yeah, well, he got he cut. The way, but it's still splinters. Yeah, and he got cut up with it. He's yeah. like, oh, yeah, I still have the scar to prove it. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, even in props and stuff, you're still going to get hurt no matter what. Yeah. Even if it's, like, with a uh, a dull knife, the tip of it's still sharp. <laughs> like, yeah, Jared because... stabbing Jensen in the leg. No, Jensen stabbing. <laughs> Jared did stab Jared Jensen. In the, in Wait, the... no. Yeah. Jensen stabbed yeah, Jared. 
yeah, Jensen had the the first blade. It is the Mark Cain blade. Yeah, the, but the, the, the thing was, part of it wasn't dull. that the knife, like the blade itself, was dull. It was because it was the very tip. Yeah, the very tip of it was sharp. Um, and, and he just he got kind of it collapsed in the right whole body spot. Weight. Yep, just above the knee, about like three because inches. <laughs> how the scene went is Jensen is supposed to collapse into Jared. Yeah. And now Jared is taller. Not by a lot, but it's he's a couple six, inches taller than Jensen. Yeah, and he's this is six relevant. Foot four. He's two inches taller. Yeah. So because Jensen like lowered himself in order to like collapse into Jared, Jared had to bend his knee to like hold Jensen up. Yep. And that's well, when the knife tip went into And that's his when the thigh. knife tip went a good it was like a good like, like bit like yeah Jensen it was like this story. it was a good bit it was like this much into his thigh yeah. Yeah. just full into the meat of the so, thigh and yeah. <laughs> yeah. just in space he's like in his eyes he's like that's in his leg that is in his leg crap yeah yeah i mean but yeah accidents Grant, that's happen. probably mild end of like what could have like gone wrong as like people yeah. talked about yeah, it's like accidents happen. But it's important I mean, that we like do, like yeah. especially for like, even and everyone like, on set up. to like, yeah, just like, to uh, prevent that from happening his, again. And yeah, to prevent it's like this from happening. I mean, Jensen whacked his eye with a sawed-off shotgun, cut himself mm -hmm. right above the eye with the sawed-off shotgun, mm -hmm. <laughs> getting it out of yes. out of baby's trunk. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, so, all right, we should... All right. Before we go on this subject <laughs> longer, we should probably continue on. <laughs> we're not even... We're still not even close to being done with this episode. So... All right, I so now it is... my favorite bit. I know. The Facebook Live talking part. I know. So in the morning, crowds are gathered around um, the restaurant, and Ernesto and Alex make their way through. And basically, the restaurant's burnt to the ground. There's like barely a skeleton, even. And Alex says they know why now. They now know why the other cards closed, and it's because someone's shaking them down. And then Alex, like he's like getting upset at himself. And it's like, Bayani warned me to stay out of it. And Ernest is like, he thought you were protecting him. And Alex like, picks up the bull and is like, yeah, hell of a job I did. And you can see his like lips quivering he, a bit. Yeah, he feels guilt. Which is how you know he's pissed. Yeah, and he also feels a mix of anger and guilt. Yeah. It's anger that, like, this person got beaten up. And then the guilt that, like, it was, he thinks it's his fault. So, Ernesto and Alex meet Bayani at the hospital. And Bayani's all beat up and he's laying in the hospital bed. I was like, we're sorry to bother you, Mr. Bayani, but we need to ask you a few questions. And he closes the curtain. And Ernesto asks him, like, what he can tell them about the attackers. And Bayani staying silent. Yeah, and he kind of, like, turns his head away and, like, his angles his body away from them. A little bit. Mm -hmm. And then Ernesto asks if he remembers, like, how many attackers there were. And is like, were they tall, short? Alex then promises Bayani that they can catch these guys, but he needs to cooperate. And Bayani snips and, like, I don't want your help. And Alex tells Bayani that, like, he knows he made a mistake and he's sorry. But to let him fix it. And then Bayani finally is like, there's nothing 
your neurons can do. Now Alex asks why. And Bayani reveals that the next time they, they will kill him. And Ernesto asks who will kill him. Sorry, I got... Hold on, I got Eminem stuck. Hang on. <laughs> um, I was sucking my teeth, hang on. Okay, I am good. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, Bonnie's sort of like nodding his head no, but Ernest is like, Chef, please. Like, pleading. And Bayani, like, looks away. And Alex is still, like, shaking. And Ernesto finally has to grab him and, like, pull him away. Yeah, it's we just, like... We then cut to... It kind of made me go, oh, man! Mm-hmm. No, because Alex is, like, feeling guilty. Yeah, I can see it. So now we are at the Capitol building where Governor Rosales is on the phone in a conference room, I think, because it's, like, a long table and there's a lot of chairs. And she's at her desk and is speaking to her doctor, asking for sure. And they're telling her she has to choose between sugar and and if they're telling her she has to choose between sugar and death, she might take death. But then says she's like, I was like, I was joking. No more baby, no more babinka. Which I forgot to look up what babinka was. <laughs> Yeah, it's basic. I looked at what of what it is. It's basically a. Uh, it's like a really sweet, like potato cake type of thing. Mm. It's basically okay. a potato version of like a beignet, but really, really sweet. Ah, okay. It's like a donut, okay. basically, and it looks good, and it's like this big. It's like a little mm. donut hole. Which looks really yummy. Say, so speaking of beignets, <laughs> remember a conversation about going to New Orleans? Yes. Beignets are like delicious. Uh, oh, we made a, we made it. We were talking the one day about how we both wanted to go to New Orleans. To like not only meet up in person, but to like see if we can catch like the redemption crew, and if for some reason we could catch like the cast out, like yeah, the cast and cr or crew even out, and invite and, and like, like invite them on doing like a special episode in New Orleans and see if we could get like the cast on. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, we could, like, like, I, in my mind, I'm thinking, like, we could probably, like, lure them over. They're like, hey, come on, let's go, let's go down to Cafe du Mont and, like, have some coffee and have some beignets. Beignets. And, and I then we tell them about the podcast, be like, hey, so. Yeah. And then, <laughs> I had a dream literally that night. Um, okay, quick side note. I had a dream that night and literally last night we were in New Orleans, you and I. We had met up at Cafe Du Mont, and we're just talking over beignets and coffee. And I just happen to look over your shoulder, and I see coming across the street, freaking Betsy and Christian <laughs> arm in arm walking <laughs> towards us, like speed walking to us. And I'm dressed kind of like this, like kind of like Elliot. And I look up, and I just like froze with the beignet in my mouth. I'm like. <laughs> And then he comes awesome. over, and I do. I did this once. I used to have. We used to have this restaurant in Wichita, um, where I live, uh, that had beignets that were like really big, and they were coated in powdered sugar. And every time you would take a breath, you would get an inhale of powdered sugar. I did that, <laughs> and I had it all over my face and all over oh my, my black gosh. shirt. Oh no! And, 
and I took a bite, and I look at Christian, we, we lock eyes, and I'm like this, staring at him, and he just smirks, and I take the bite, and I drop the banana, and I'm like, son of a bitch, and he's like, oh my god, and you know what he says to me, he says, watch your language, and I'm like, oh, bite me, <laughs> and that, that makes Bethy, like, giggle, and you just look at me, like, dumbfounded, and I'm like, Oh my god. And then and I hear Alvin Kristen Hodge come up behind me. And tr- he tries to take one of my damn beignets and I slap his hand away. He's like, oh, I no. oh my god. Me, like, yeah, like they all like swarm us for some reason. They they wanted to talk to us for something. Oh <laughs> I literally did one of this. <laughs> no, oh, that's no, awesome. No, no. no. With how it is, and he looks so offended because I have like a pile of beignets with the one that I took a bite out of on the top, mm-hmm. and he's reaching for the one on the very bottom of the pile. <laughs> and I just slap his hand away like five times, and then I finally do one hard slap, and he pulls his hand back, and he's like, looks at me like dumbfounded. I'm like, ask nicely, and I will give you one. Oh and I just God. smirk at him, and you just start laughing. And Christian just gives you the eyes, and you just, you just like, ignore him and start laughing even harder. And then, then Aldis and Christian both beg me for one. And I just look at you, and I was like, I just give you the look of, like, should I? And you just, like, nod your head, and I was like, all right. And I just picked them up, and I was like, here. And I oh, my like, God. And they both take it simultaneously, and I'm like boys oh my god <laughs> and, and they just look at me like i'm insane <laughs> but bethy starts cracking up even harder and i'm like what have i gotten myself into where's the right. number two <laughs> uh, okay. all right i'm almost out of my tea jesus christ all right let's keep going so kai walks up and resu- um the assistant gets um, Rosales' attention and gestures Kai to go over. Rosales hangs up the phone and says that Kai must be the detective accomplice over to join the security detail. Kai introduces herself and they shake hands. Rosales then asks if Kai is there to spy on her campaign, then asks if she is his mole. And Kai's like, I know how this looks, but I assure you I have no agenda. Rosales makes the comment of, like, not yet. I was like, I'm sorry? Rosales is that everyone has a pure heart until someone offers them something they want. Kai says all she wants is to keep Cebu safe. And Rosales is like, you're an idealist. She, yeah, she, like, she sounded say that so like it's a bad genuine. thing. Yeah, she sa- sounded so genuine because it was like, this is her home. Mm-hmm. Cebu is her home. And of course she would want to defend it. Yeah, because like, like, she tells Alex in that first episode, like, I don't care about the politics. I care about these okay. five blocks. This town. I care about these islands and the people there. The people here, starting with these five blocks. Yeah, and you can see the honesty on her face. And I'm like, yeah. he realizes that they all have a common goal. They like yeah, it's they want to keep people safe. Yeah, that's the important part. Yeah. Not the bureaucracy, not the like backstabbing, any of it. Mm-hmm. The people is what's important. Yeah, and it's... that that's mm-hmm. something that that's a common theme with all of Dean's shows, especially this one. That kind of makes my heart hurt because. That is something that this, our society nowadays is lacking, is the care of people. We used to yeah. care about people. We used to be, like, wanting to help fellow neighbor and stuff. But now it's more about political views and all this stuff. But mm. it brings, this brings that up a little bit. But it has the people aspect mm. more yeah. pronounced, which... It's good writing on his part, by the way. It like, is, yeah. Ideas like that. Mm. It's like, I would like to see more of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I didn't write I that. I agree. Yeah. That was 
like a really that was like a really good side note that yeah I just thought of right now. Yeah, I but, agree completely. I mean, that's what's important. Mm. People over yeah. numbers. Yeah, I agree. So. Continuing on, so the assistant comes back in saying that Mr. Montrose is there to see her. And Montrose, who is played by Simon R. Blaster, he's in an all navy blue suit. And Rosala sends him in to send him in, and the Montrose and Rosala shake hands. With Rosala saying it's a pleasure to meet him, then introduces Kai as part of a security detail. Kind Montrose shake hands, and then Montrose tells Rosales he was hoping they could talk in private. Rosales agrees and tells Kai to step outside. Kai agrees after a second and leaves. And Montrose shuts the door and closes the curtain. And Kai is immediately like, okay, this is suspicious. Yeah, her uh, cop radar is... Her instincts here. are going off. Yeah, she's Again. like, there's something off here. Which I thought was really cool. And, like, you could see it very subtly that there's something off. And in my mind, I was thinking, eh, there's something not right. Yeah, it was like, closed door meeting. That's suspicious. Yep. So then Alex, we see Alex and Ernesto walk through a street and past a building that has a very tall gate and it looks kind of, looks a bit sketchy and we must asks asks alex to slow down and alex tells ernesto he came to cebu for the culture and not to burn it down ernesto reminds alex he didn't set the fire Alex says it's his fault that I was in the hospital, and if he hadn't interfered, they wouldn't have retaliated. Nessu says they have no idea why he was targeted. And Alex says they know what he looks like, and he knows what he looks like. And if they find him there, they can arrest him. Alex then asks Nesta if this is the unofficial, like, bad guy bar of Cebu as they stop at the gate. Sorry. And as Nesta is trying to tell Alex that you should know before they go in that they don't like surprises, Alex gets bumped by a face tag. Gets bumped by face tats and spots him putting his hood up. And it like, it, it freezes for a sec. Like it slow moves. Like you see yeah. Alex turn. Spots face tats. Putting his hood up. And then it, it comes back as Ernesto says, they don't like surprises. Then, fucking dumbass. Starts yelling for face tats to freeze. <sighs> and then a chase ensues. Sorry, I just hit my mic. I mean, what did Alex expect to happen? <laughs> like, but then Alex runs through face tats, runs after face tats knocking through a gate it's fucking Oklahoma <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell me that Christian didn't purposefully see that gate there and tell Dean I'm going through that gate he probably did knowing him Fucking Oklahoma, man. So they continue running. <laughs> and Alex, he like climbs up a box that goes on the roof of a building that jumps down on two cars and back onto the street. And they continue running. 
that they approach a crowd and um, we see face t or someone, I think it's face tats, climbing up a truck and Alex gets slowed down by the crowd and loses him. So then Alex turns and sees a little boy and he's like pointing to one to like the other side. Alex like goes in at that direction, but then We hear the, a dirt bike start and face tat starts riding in from the opposite direction. Now it's just, it's funny. You just, he points at the boy and it's like, you. And the boy just shrugs and Alex runs after the <laughs> dirt bike. And then Ernesto just comes out of freaking nowhere and tackles face tats off the bike and alex and nesta like grab him and alex is yelling for him to get up and this is like you would have had him had you eaten the duck egg <laughs> as he's like cleaning his glasses and alex is like well it didn't stay down did it come on and they take face tats away which that had to me that Ernesto was the one you had to like deal with Alex puking all night. Oh, you probably had to get man. him some like watered down Gatorade or Gatorade. Not probably like honestly tried water. getting Alex to eat more refill soup or something. I would not be surprised. <laughs> because it is kind of like presented as a bit of a cure-all. That does actually kind of work a bit for the one scene, <laughs> but... Yeah. I mean, I, like, think, um, I, I think like the like vegetables a, and stuff like in it and like the broth itself would be good to settle your stomach. Yeah, because ch chicken noodle soup is legit like the best thing for if you're like have a cold or even just chicken bouillon and water warm water it helps yeah. with your throat and your or, stomach if or easier on the stomach is usually like gator water down gatorade is what my mom used to give me i would do my mom would give me uh or ginger ale water down yeah water down ginger, ginger ale down uh ginger. basically just water it down like so up. it's not as strong yeah which makes um, it easier on the stomach Yep, and I even, there was one time when I was younger, I couldn't stand drinking Gatorade or anything like that. So mm -hmm. she would make me a cup of, you know, the little bouillon cubes with hot I water. So. She'd mm -hmm. make me that. Yeah, she'd make me basically chicken broth, and I would drink that, and it would soothe my throat. I mean, it makes um, sense. From, like, the fact that I was coughing up so much that I was basically puking my guts out. Oh no. And I couldn't keep anything else down. Yeah. Other than that. And it still and works. I still use that Vicks, remedy to say. If any of you have like stuffy nose, we're getting into allergy season and like cold season here a bit with the allergies. So I'm already suffering from that. <laughs> VIX. You take like the VIX vapor rub. Take like a towel. Or a handkerchief, whichever you have, put the VIX on the on the towel or handkerchief, and when you go to sleep, put it like either tie it real. You can kind of like get away with like tying it real loose, like super loose, super loose on the neck, or yeah. you can just kind of like lay it on your chest, kind of like or it's this. beside your nose. As yep. long as you can like, breathe it in. Yeah. I've, and that actually, actually that. will help open you up because. Yeah. I've, it works. I've tried it. Yeah. And so, anyways, I imagine that we had, if Alex had like longer hair, Ernesto would have been like holding his hair back as Alex freaking puked his guts out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, the poor guy can't catch a break. No, he cannot. I felt bad for him, too, but I was also laughing, too. I was like, I wonder if partially that was Alex throwing up, or what if that was actual, like, actually CK, like, getting sick. Uh, well, I don't know. The possibility of both, because the fact that he ate five of those freaking eggs, it would make anybody sick. True. <laughs> but... It's fucking Oklahoma. Yep. So. <laughs> I mean. Have you I seen never, like how I much will... freaking spice he puts in crap? I know. Like he is like. And this is the same man who likes arrow. freaking pineapple on pizza. True. <laughs> I, I like pineapple on Canadian bacon and jalapeno on mine. It's good. Sweet and spicy. It's good. Okay, jalapeno you can get away with. Yeah. Freaking pineapple. It's good. It's sweet and spicy. I like it. Oh my god. Just tr yeah, try it before you knock it, okay? Mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> I oh, yeah, like is, my this, mushroom, is... my sausage, and my pepperoni and cheese. <laughs> mushroom. <laughs> You don't like my I love mushroom. Raw mushrooms I can handle. Cooked it's, mushrooms. It's cooked. They're slimy. They're slimy. So are raw mushrooms. No, they're not. Are they a bit? I guess it depends nope. on what you get them in. Yeah. Alright, Kitty went but, on. Uh, but yeah, Christian <laughs> and I have that same thing in common. We both like spicy stuff. I would literally eat Me up to a certain amount. Yeah, I would literally eat like uh Jalapenos, like fresh jalapenos with the seeds. Yeah, my, uh, or my like, like pop kick right now, yeah. Jalapeno it's really seeds. Good. Yep. Eat it whole. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I like my spicy. That shit can like burn your esophagus. I know. I pay <laughs> for it later. But it's so good. <laughs> now, my kick actually right now is you, um, Shrimp with pineapple, peppers, onions, and sweet and sour sauce. And then you put that over um, rice, just white rice. That and that is like, literally like the best actually, meal ever. Yeah, that's actually really good. It was like that's basically like a. It's like they have. There's this Chinese place that we have here that's got like this. It's like a, it's like that, but it was like with coconut. Yeah, I've been trying to expand my palate because it's good. Be and I mean, like, own, so. um, I have the stuff to make that, and I think I might make it uh, one night. It is good, but instead of using shrimp, because I'm not really a big shrimp fan, I'm gonna we try. We can it probably use that. chicken. Yeah, yeah I was just say, swap I was, shrimp for chicken, chicken, and it'll be the same thing. That'd be good. All right, that sounds continue. Good. Dang it, I'm making myself hungry. <laughs> All right, continuing on. You got snacks. Continuing on. Not anymore. Right. You ate all your snacks. Yep. Yeah, it's fine. Continuing on. So you go back to the Capitol building where Kai's waiting outside the office. So Montrose is yelling about this being a good deal. And storms out of the office. And Kai is like parked up like, oh, yelling. Not good. Rosella steps out and sees he's gone. And Kai asks if everything's okay. And Rosella tells Kai that men like that think that just because they have money, they could buy whatever they want and whoever they want. Which I can't tell. That was supposed to be a play on um like um people like that, corporations like that. They have all the money, they have all the power, and they use it to make people like or if that was like a play on a 
like that famous line where it's like the leverage where it's um, people like that corporations corporations like that they have all the money they have all the power and use it to make people like you go away right now you're suffering under an enormous weight we provide yeah leverage uh, yeah i actually think that that um there had to be a play yeah definitely because i heard that line i was like i was like this feels that's just like something to nate me. said <laughs> Oh, then we get a bit um, intense because then we cut to the police interrogation scene. Yeah, really wish it had more tea for this scene because <clears throat> yeah, because whew. there is something about pissed off Alex that is extremely attractive. There's a common theme here. There is. There's a theme here, I must say. So then we got to the police interrogation room where Alex and Ernesto are interrogating face tats. Alex is across from him standing up and Ernesto is up to the side. Alex slams his hand on the table very annoyed and angry and is like, I know you did it. Like I know you did it. I know you did it. So why don't you confess and make it easier on yourself? Face Tats then starts laughing manically, telling Ernesto his friend has anger issues. Ernesto says he's working on it, and ho 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 is huh? Alex. He like he slides. He slides across the table. Then gets in face tat's face and is like, You think this is angry? You think this is angry? I'm not even annoyed, man. You want to see angry punk? <laughs> He's like, I'm not even there yet, but you're pushing it. <laughs> but it also reminds me of the scene from like Avengers Age of Ultron where Bruce is like, where Bruce Banner is like, he tells Wanda, like, you think this is angry? I could choke the life out of you and wouldn't change a shade. That's dark. <laughs> yeah. No, but like that's because like the idea of like you think you've seen angry, like I like you have not seen angry out of me, buddy boy. If I mean so like that, it's like, oh, you haven't you haven't seen what my anger is, pretty much. And then I, I immediately know. thought, oh, it. <laughs> See, there's a theme here. There's a theme here. Because uh, there's something. I don't know if this is, like, what this is exactly from. There is something about CK playing pissed off. It's a little sexy. Because when he's pissed off, the gravelly in his voice comes out a bit more. And I love that gravel in his voice. It's like and the slide was just was hot. Like, it was like okay. I kind of want to see if there's a gag girl of him like sliding completely off the table onto his butt. <laughs> <laughs> so hold on, hold on. I have about the gag reel. <laughs> no, one does exist. Okay, according to the Facebook Live and Dean Devlin, I know so I've taken it as w true because it's from Dean Devlin himself. So there is in some vault somewhere. There is a gag reel. So I just might. I already asked Deed once. And he liked it. I think. Did he? I don't remember. But. I want to get the gag reel. Yeah. 
like he, he I, I asked him like what are we gonna get in getting the gag reel like when are you gonna release the almost paradise gag yeah, reel yeah. like soon and he said that to me I was like son of a <clears throat> but when when we were watching this when I was watching the uh the live live when it was actually happening I we asked Several of us fans asked him, like, when are we getting the gag girl? When are we getting the gag girl? Come on, Dean, come on. <laughs> and I can see Christian looking down and read it, and he's like, they're asking about the gag girl. And I'm like, yeah, when is it coming out? And he's like, soon. Maybe. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, give us the gag girl. I don't, I, yeah, but I don't know if, like, the reason why, like, this that like made it was attractive is because of daddy issues or competency competency kings <laughs> i kind of like the like for me it was like the the i ain't taking shit from nobody kind of side of him and there out, is like, something nonsense, no nonsense type of like about... now he came out with him full force and i was like yeah. That's actually kind of hot. <laughs> there is there is something about that calm southern like that southern kind of ang- calm anger. It's like yeah, it's like you piss me it's off, like, but I'm gonna be polite about it. it yes. Like, it's a southern boy thing, and I'm like it is. I've only seen that one other time. It was with my cousin's boyfriend at the time. <laughs> he got pissed. He was polite about it too, but it was kind of cute. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's... Y'all, side note, y'all southern boys know what you're doing when you get mad and you are polite yes. about it. It's like, stop it! And, like, also when he does, like, the yes ma'am, or, like, sweetheart. Ugh, or darling. Ugh. Oh, God. Uh, darling. Uh, kill me now. <laughs> Just kill me now. <laughs> Uh, now I kind of want to meet Christian so he can say that to me. <clears throat> Moving on. So, Reset then asks Alex if he thinks he's scared of him, and his eyes look like they're about to pop out of the freaking socket. And Alex is like, I know you're scared of me because I saw you. I saw you take your hand. And I saw you put it around by on his neck hours before he was assaulted and his place burned down, burned to the ground. In his hands, like, oh, uh, God, this is going to sound, this is going to just sound dirty. So I'm just going to go at it full force here. <laughs> oh, God, call me now. So, like, at first, like, Alex is, like, hand is like th- close but there's you can still see that there's a bit of like a gap then he's like shaking it but then there's a point where he's actually like touching like by the end of that like whole thing he's like touching the throat yep. <laughs> I'm not getting into that and I'm not touching that Continuing on. It was like, the, I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. It's like, yes, you are. You're good in my face. I'm not touching. And then he's just no, like, that's not what I meant at all. But like, continuing <laughs> on. I know what you meant. Stop it. <laughs> Behave yourself. <laughs> You're blushing. <laughs> You're blushing. <laughs> Shush. <laughs> continuing on. So Ernest is just watching as Alice continues asking, like, like, why did you do it, huh? Why did you do it? You owe, what did you owe you? You owe your protection money? And he starts at, at this point is like shitting his pants. And probably yeah, pissing his pants, you, you too. Can, you <laughs> could, like, see the, like... You can see the shit. In his body language. You can yeah. see the shit because he, like... He, he went from being kind of cocky to, like, leaving him back just ever so slightly, but, like, pulling away. Just very, like, slightly pulling away due to fear, which is hilarious. 
because like you can see though that like that you can see that's where the shift went because I think because like before like Alex is like like face tat saw Alex is like as a nuisance and was just like annoying but now you see is like oh this dude is scary And, like, he nearly got away with, like, choking me. And is, like, actually angry right now. And is, like, in my space. <laughs> and honestly, it's a power dynamic thing. Because yeah, face the power tats thing is, like... Because face tats is used to having the power. Because like even then, like even then is like, like you got the wrong guy and is like you can't. It's like you can't prove nothing. But then as soon as Alex like slides over the table, it's like, in a way, it's kind of like, fuck you, I have the power, and yeah. I can make your life hell. What I thought of when I saw like that's that, what he's portraying. That, yeah, when that happened for me, um, that brought up I watch NCIS New Orleans and mm -hmm. Pride says this to an admiral. He's like, "Those stars and bars don't mean crap in here. When you're in here in this interrogation mm -hmm. room, I'm in charge. My Which, house. Actually, I'm. It's, it's kind of funny because we talked about power dynamic." And transferring the power been. in the last episode, yeah. leverage episode we did. Yeah, this is exactly that. It's the same it's the thing. Role reversal. Yeah, it's the role reversal. They're yeah. ex um, establishing dominance by taking away the power of uh, intimidation. They're taking it away. Yeah, but also, and he scared crap. <laughs> yeah, it, it's <laughs> kind of good cop bad. Uh, like, at first, you kind of suspect that like. Alex is bad cop, Ernesto is good cop. But Ernesto, like, yeah. gets Alex to cool off and, like, gets him off the table, like, Alex. And then Alex just gets off the table and go has to go to the side to cool off. Yeah, like, get some but distance. But then Ernesto's like, like, oh, I'm gonna murder this guy. Yeah, and it was just like, okay, you've had enough, Alex. Go chill. <laughs> And Ernesto is like, we get one witness. You go to prison for a long time. <laughs> Not the local jail. Like, big boy lockup. And that's <laughs> also where, like, Ernesto gets the power. Like, we just get, like, one person to, like, testify. Like, we get one witness. They're like, you're not going to the local jail. Where, like, you probably have buddies. So, I protect you. You're going to the big boy lockup. <laughs> like, how he phrases that. He's like, it no, is. You're going to big boy jail. You're going to big boy jail where you're defending yourself against but a I guy think named Bubba. That's <laughs> why this works. Yeah. But that is why that works. That's just it's like, like, you're going to go to prison for a long time, but it's not going to be the local jail where, like, we can enjoy it, or you'll have a more pleasant experience. Be, yeah, be safe and stuff like that. It's gonna be where you're fighting for your life to stay alive. Yeah, it's like, like you're going to the big boy lockup. Like you're screwed, and because yep. he's running, because then face out starts running scared after that. Is like, yeah, nothing on me. And this is like, oh, Mister Walker here was. The witness, witness to your assault and attempted extortion. And that <laughs> tries to backpedal and lie his way out of it, but it's not true. It's not working. I mean, Alex would technically count as a witness. I mean, yeah, because he saw it happen and he stopped it from getting worse. Yeah. Well, so. Sort of. <laughs> yeah. Well, he counts as a witness. Yeah. 
so I think at that moment, Spades Hat's like, shit. Because, like, he has that one witness. Yep, he's like, crap. And then he's like, they're, then reveals they're not going to stop nothing. And he's just a guy who takes his orders. Alex starts from who and face tap. Uh, Alex asks from who. And face tats asks, or face tat says, if he tells them that he's dead. And Alex just sits down and stares. Like, because anyway, the way he like slouches on his seat and starts like looking at face tats, it's like, you could end up dead anyway, so you better start talking. <laughs> a bit. Was that not what it was? Yeah, a little bit. He's like, he kind of had the like, well, like you're your funeral, damned bud. if you do, if you're damned if you don't, buddy. It's like, well, <laughs> it's your funeral, bud. Because <laughs> that is kind of like the situation they put Fate's stats in. I, I like how he they, is kind of damned it, if he does and damned if he doesn't. I don't. like. I like how Ernesto played it where they had the shop owner as being dead, but in reality, he was just fine. So they're playing with his mind a little bit. They're implying that he killed him. So, no, they're just saying Very salt. They don't mention anything about like, Yeah, dead they're implying bodies. that they know something that he doesn't. They're implying they, yeah. they know something he doesn't, which I thought was really kind of cool. And that's a psycho. That's a psychology like hack. You try to mm-hmm. make them kind of doubt what their perception is, which is really mm-hmm. really cool and really fun to do. I've mm-hmm. done it to my character several times in the in my stories. It's hilarious. All right, all right, all right. Continuing on. So, all right. So Alex and Ernesto were done. Didn- See walking through the hallway of the police station. Alex says they have to find out who he's working for. And Ernesto said the free and it's like you said a few cells have been shunted down all over the all over the town recently, right? This is like yeah, and Alex guesses that Bates Tats isn't the only thug shaking down chefs and Ernesto is like why does it it's like it feels like you're headed towards one of those ideas that puts me in mortal danger. <laughs> it's like the, I'm in danger. Yeah, and that is kind of what it's like. Is like, oh, you're gonna get me involved in something that's gonna put me in danger. Crap. Mm-hmm. And Alex says that if. Like he ain't gonna give up his crime boss. They're going they'll see if his crime boss will come to them as they exit the station. So basically they're going their plan is to like put a little bait out there and see what who bites, essentially. So we're gonna which I mean Nate uh did say or as Nathan Ford once said, when asked how they were gonna f- find someone's secrets, Nathan did say they're gonna crawl into that rock with them. So yeah. All right, so we go to Ocampo's office, and he's getting a. Suit tailored. <laughs> and for some reason, he's obsessed with the padding in his shoulders. <laughs> I bet uh, Noni had so much fun doing that scene. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, that plays Ocampo. Uh, uh, he yeah. had, I bet he had fun. Doing I bet that. he did too. Because I would have, too. <laughs> uh, we ain't even on, like, the good part of this. So, yeah, we're still going. All right, so then... Kai comes in and Akampa asks how, like, a special operations when if there's anything to report. Kai says something strange did happen, and Akampa tells her to spill. Kai reveals that Rosales was in a meeting that got heated. And Akampa's like, in a meeting? 
be like, that's it? Like, I get in heated meetings every day. Wait. Like, I want to know about the corruption, money changing hands, vote rigging. Guys, like, sorry, I, I didn't see anything like that. And cop but tells her to keep at it, and he has the meeting with someone coming up with a very important donor. Kai asks who the donor is, and Ocampo says a Canadian businessman who shares his vision, vision of bringing more jobs to Cebu, then leads Kai out. But as Kai walks out, she sees it is Montrose. So they sort of share a look of, like, I know, and I know you know. <laughs> kind of, it's like that sound, like, she knows, or that TikTok yep. audio. Mm -hmm. like, she knows, it's and like I know that. she knows. <laughs> that, yeah. And then we see that oh, Ernesto. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then we see Ernesto has a food stand called the Laughing Lechon. And the logo is kind of cute because it's a cartoon pig head. <laughs> and we see Ernesto is did, sort of like cutting up that. a pig. Cutting up a pig on like a large wooden circle block. And big guy and small guy walk up. And small guy says, you must be new around here. And Ernesto tells him. He has the finest lechon in the Philippines, and it's fresh off the spit. Which, for those of you who don't know, lechon is slow-roasted suckling pig. And it's usually stuffed with lemongrass, tamarind, garlic, onions, and chives, and then is roasted on a large bamboo spit over an open fire. And a small guy comes over, knocking the pork out of Ernesto's hands, which... One, rude. Two, don't waste the pork. <laughs> and he's saying, like, that um, him and his friend work for the people in charge of the area. And he, like, didn't get approval for this, for his business. And he's kind of, like, backing... Ernesto went to the restaurant. And Ernesto says he didn't realize he needed approval. So what goes like, well, not you do. And not having it is a problem. And this is like, a problem? And then Big Guy reveals a small revolver, revolver in his waist, waist pants. Which, you know what I was thinking of. <laughs> The last fight we got with Elliot in the, in, on leverage, yep. the, in the miracle job. And he was like, how is this for an answer? And I really wish <laughs> we would have had a fight scene like that. Yes. Just oh, freaking oh, Alex oh, or yeah. Ernesto. Grabbing the gun while it's still in this pants. And <laughs> then the both man. and then they both like freezing. Like big guy and small guy freezing, being like, oh shit. It's like ah, crap. <laughs> what do we do now? Yeah. So hilarious. small guy asks if he gets what he's saying, or Nessa says he does. But he made an arrangement with someone else, or someone who offered to provide him with protection as he takes like his ball cap and glasses off. Which typically mean, when the glasses come off, that usually means <laughs> shit's about to go down. Somebody's, yeah, somebody's about to get their ass beat. <laughs> yes, that's usually what the glasses <laughs> off means. And that's what they said. That's what Dean said. Like, they yeah, do when the say. glasses come off, 
shit's about bad to go down. To happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I agree. And Small goes like, oh, really? Who did you make that arrangement with? Then you just hear Alex's voice. <laughs> and he's like, senoras, with the Spanish accent. And then we see Alex. He's sitting down. He's in like, he's in like all white. He has like a white dress shirt, like a white, I think it's like a white wife beater underneath. And then white pants. And he has a long silver state necklace that has a guitar tint, guitar pick pendant and a tan hat with like a black stripe wearing chin fluff. He has freaking chin fluff on, but it's not even like make its beard bigger. It's like literally his chin. Just to make like his chin be, like his chin beard like longer. Yep. <laughs> it's like uh, why there, okay, there there's a there's a funny little like tidbit. Uh can I share it? I know exactly what you're talking about because this this mm-hmm. this freaking makes me crack up every time. Um, but the adhesive that they used stuck to CK's actual little stubble beard, and so so when Kai pulled it off, he the ripped out his actual did, hair. The, the little yelp he did, the little like like that little grim the grimace that he did, that was real. It pulled his actual chin hair out. The Are stubble, yes, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Because they said it in this uh, Facebook Live, they mentioned it, and it's like, yeah, that the little like Yelp you hear me do, that was legit. Oh, that was no, legit. Me I in didn't pain. know that. <laughs> I didn't well, know that. Do. <laughs> but uh, here's also sipping tea. They're sipping something out of a cup, and it's like the, Alex tells him he's the man he's looking for. But see, this necklace we brought, we talked about it earlier, but this necklace. Is actually something that CK usually wears for his roles. And yeah, it's something that he, he's worn it when he's played Elliot. Yeah, and it's act. It's actually, I actually found out uh, what it was. He talked about it in an interview. It's a. Uh, you see, there's a story French. behind the necklace. It's, it's a, yeah, it's the it's a French uh, coin. In the shape of a guitar pick, in honor of his mom and his oh, it's a New fir- Orleans heritage, fertilis, ain't it? Yeah, yep. In the shape of a guitar pick, uh, that oh, uh, cool. a friend that's of, in his honor of his gave mom. him. Yeah, that a friend yeah. of his gave uh, him. And I was like, oh, that's really sweet to honor your mom that, that way. Cool. And when that he talks usually... to Daddy, he looks down at it. And like, kind of think. I know. Uh, I know he wears it as Elliot, but does he wear it as Jake and Lindsay? Mm -hmm. I can see the chain. It's tucked. Did he wear it and hide? I think so. I'm gonna have to rewatch that movie now. That's that's actually on my list. Is hide, <laughs> which is it's it's a really fucked up movie, but it's good. <laughs> Anyways, continuing on because we're almost two hours forty minutes into this, and I'm only about halfway done with my notes. So <laughs> Alex goes up to the coon. <laughs> Is introducing him, he introduces himself as Diego Caballos and Ernesto is under his protection and he kind of has his hands on his hip. <laughs> and then they're all like, like, what? What? Like, what? And they all just start laughing. But then, like, the big guy, the big guy pulls the revolver up at Alex, like, smacks it out of his hand. 
like I think he like what he like grabs the wrist. Like he grabs like the wrist with his one hand. Yeah. To like keep the gun away and not on the to the ground, like pointing to the ground. And then like smacks out of his hand. But then gets tossed into a crate. And Anissa takes on the small guy. Alex gets tossed up against the fence. But he drops his accent. This is like, oh, I just bought that hat. And then Ernesto uses the like the wooden block to like take down the small guy. He does Alex does this really interesting like gut face punch. Cause he like jumps up a bit too. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so the only like the only like, movie that punches I- him in the gut and then hops up to get the Yeah, and does like the he doesn't hit him with his hand, he hits him with the side of his arm, like in the face. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he does what's called the tooth fairy with the arm. And it's like no, I didn't know that. that's actually a really good spot to hit. It's like with your forearm or your elbow and hit somebody in the no, face. Well, that's, um so- well, that's Muay Thai, ain't it? Like elbows and knees. Uh, that's uh Kali. It's all elbows and knees. Uh, you block. Uh, Muay Thai is more open-handed and throwing punches. It's kickboxing. Uh, uh, Kali okay. is blocking. So, do you know a little bit about um stunt fighting and different fighting styles? But I never actually like trained in any. So. Apologies. But anyways, the fighting continues. Ernesto's like getting stuff thrown at him as Alex gets tossed into his shack. Ernesto's doing better than Alex. <laughs> I'm sorry. Alex is just getting tossed around like a freaking rag doll. Yep. And then this is just freaking weird. Because then big guy. Oh, what did you freaking send me? <laughs> In that oh, picture, you can see the chain. Chain, you can see the yeah, chain of his necklace, yeah. I know, you could usually see the chain. Anyways. Oh, yeah, there's only a handful of Alex, episodes of. Uh, or, yeah. the, the big guy like like picks up a pitchfork and stares Alex down. And I'm like pretty sure he's like flexing like the pec mux- muscles. So I swore I saw I I, I saw it go up. Yeah, no, bit. it's just like he, but he like he puts back on the axis. Like, but... What are you gonna do with that? <laughs> and Alex blocks the the charge. Pins big guy against the shack, and Ernesto dodges small guy's charge and hits him with the chair. Big guy tells <laughs> Alex awesome. he's going to burn. Then Alex is like, no, we are going to burn. And he like, it's actually kind of cool because he uses, he used leverage. No, because think about it. So he... So he has, like... He has, like, the pitch... He's holding, like, the pitchfork, right? Mm -hmm. Dude's against the shack. He gets down. Pulls... Like, he pulls back. No, he pulls down. Gets down on the ground. Flips big guy over. Yep. On his back, onto the fire, or onto the coals. Sorry, it's the coals. That would still be kind of warm too, but really, like yeah, it would not feel that. pleasant, I must say. Yeah, and you can tell by the guy as soon as he lands, he's like, he yeah. kind of like recoiled away from it. But and then we see that, and then Ernesto flips small guy onto a table. 
Notice how they awesome. did it differently. Like Alex used like momentum and leverage, literally, to like get the goop yeah. over him by like yep. pulling down then. And Ernesto, up and Ernesto used just... actual like fighting technique to get him yeah. away. Well, because Christian said Pretty this cool. in the um. In the Facebook Live where this episode is, because a lot of people were asking about a Alex versus Ernesto fight, and he like he would win, and CK's like, well, like Ernesto is a fighter, Alex is a brawler, True. so Ernesto would beat him. To a bloody pulp. Yeah. But it's just interesting to like see the different fighting styles. How like Ernesto. He's tall and thin. Very muscular. <laughs> so he has maybe. He's muscular but he also is like a bit thin too. Yeah. Like he's not extremely built I mean. Like he still has like muscular but he's not like. But it's not like super, super built. Duper, like, yeah. He's for but how his fight that translates sort of into his fighting style. Because with Ernesto's fighting style, it is speed. Yep. Like speed and precision. But with Alex. It's dirty because uh, bar brawl type fighting it it is a brawler so he's yep. more like boxing punch like gut punches like using like um his arms like using improvised weaponry and using his environment yeah, which, which I don't know really if cool. that if that sort of translated to like having Christian so long working with them, um, like John Rogers and Leverage, who actually worked with Jackie Chan. I think for the Jackie Chan Chronicles, I think was the name of the series John Rogers did, but. Jackie Chan's uh, fighting style and he's well known for this is using random objects as weapons. Yep. Like that's just like anything, it, anything you can get your hands on is a weapon if you can yeah. wield it properly. So it's just interesting to see like those different fighting styles and how, how it translates to yep. And Nesto is able to take on the small guy because they both have like speed and agility to their advantage. The small guy doesn't have the patience or Nesto has. Or the discipline. Yeah, because because Ernesto's like letting Because uh, Ernesto will like do a in. lot of blocking and then get in a good lick. He's like his, letting even his, his fight come scene in the second, him. in the last step, the second episode, Ernesto's fight scene. He was doing mm -hmm. almost all blocking and dodging. Yeah, with a little bit of striking here and there. Yeah, just a little bit. But compared and to that, like that, that's that's Kali. It's blocking, to, and striking. Yeah. yeah, and the only but time with, he really would strike is if he's like was trying to like get the goons back to like put some space in between them or when he was yep. striking down the zone. Yep. And, and like with this fight with Alex, Alex does not have patience at any fight Alex is in. You can see he like, he does not have the discipline. He's going like punches. He's bare knuckle. Like I want to, I want to get these guys down as fast as possible, sort of yeah. way of fighting. Yeah. 
which I thought was kind of cool. And that's uh, because, you know how GK's been a brawler and stuff on most of his, like, shows and stuff that he's been on. And um, on on this, he's fight coordinator and stunt coordinator. Yeah, he does have to work. Choreographing all of this. So, yeah. Yeah, he kind of does. He coordinates with the stunt crew and stunt coordinators. Yeah. Um, But he's, like, the head guy that they go to for, like, advice. Um, but then, like, on Angel and stuff like yeah. that, he had a fight coordinator helping him plan out the fights, but he was doing his own stunts. Same with Leverage. And they mm-hmm. kind of took his, his background in college. Like, he does back. have his stunt double. Yeah, but they he rarely uses him. But Yeah, just barely. Um, yeah. But mm-hmm. it's cool to see that they brought the difference variation of fighting styles yeah because like i mean ernesto i think might have been able to take on big guy maybe (laughs) but like but because you would think like you would want like your tall guy because ernesto is kind of tall yeah, tall and skinny. <laughs> I think. A little yeah, bit. is a bit tall. He's he's a bit on the taller, taller, skinny side, which is perfectly fine. But you would ex- almost, you kind of what I've expected, like, Ernesto to go up against big guy and Alex with small guy. Because just height-wise... But Alex, because right off the bat, Ernesto is blocking. Like, he's blocking and dodging. And first thing Alex does, disarms the gun. Yep. But, because as he disarms the gun, he gets tossed into the shack. So... That does it does make sense with their fighting styles, and I just find that interesting. It's just interesting to look at their different fighting styles and how it almost is like goes into their personalities too a bit. If you want to go deeper. Are you frozen? No, never mind. You're not. I just, I didn't see you moving for a bit, so I was like, I got scared. Oh, sorry, I was, I was looking <laughs> down at something. All right, you're good. You're good. I did that once. I froze like maybe once, and it was earlier. Oh, which is weird. Oh, yeah. I yeah, it is. <laughs> if you think about their fighting styles, do kind of match their personalities. Oh, yeah. Like, Ernesto is more, like, disciplined and, like, uh, disciplined and reserved. While Alex is more reactive and uh, more just hyper. Yeah, kind of. Like, hyper focused almost. As like get the the person away from you as fast as possible. Yeah, basically, and that does like translate into the that fighting really cool. styles. With cool. Ernesto doing more of the blocking, waiting for the opportunity to get that one hit in, that will end, like get that one hit in. At the right time, where Alex is like getting as many hits as he can. More sporadic is what he is. Yeah, which is hilarious. But it makes it does calculated. make sense for like who they are, though. Yep. Very so, much so, on. Yeah. So you then see that big guy and small guy are tied up. Big guy on the spit pool, and small guy on the support beam. And uh, I have to bring it up. 
CK's Alex's Spanish accent. Because you can hear the Texas drawl. Okay. Come through. We're just hilarious. It's worse with certain words. Yep. I could just hear like the Texas come out. And it drives me nuts. It's I find it funny. I find it funny. Yeah. But also it's it like, is funny, it just drives me nuts. Really? Really, man? Really? <sighs> Alright, so Alex keeps the accent going and tells the goon their boss is going to have to pay for his drug cleaning as Alex puts his hat back on. And the small guy tells Alex that their boss is going to have him killed, calling him Spanish fly. And Alex is like, you are in no position to make threats. <laughs> Which, I mean... That's funny. Yeah, then Alex asks why they're trying to shake down his clients. And Big Guy reveals that they just want to make people move along and they don't want money just for them to leave. Alex asks who their boss is and Big Guy's like, you know we can't tell you that. So Alex, Jen, <laughs> this is funny. Alex then turns to Ernesto and is like, well, it looks like we're going to have to slow to us, them, chef. Tell me, how would you like your low-level criminal cooked? Your low-level criminals <laughs> cooked. And this is like, well done. And this is like, all right, well done. Let's start with the big one. <laughs> <laughs> and he loses his shit. It was hilarious to see that. And I was like... How did y'all not break character? Because <laughs> they probably did. They probably broke character. At least twice. That was so um, funny. You know, just so funny. You know, it's also the way Alex just says, like, let's start with the big one. And, like, he starts freaking out. as like, they because yep. they go to, like, move the spit. The big guy fesses up and is like, all right, we'll tell you what you want. And Alex just cocks his head like, all right, start talking. <laughs> so Kai's at her desk and we see Montrose walk out of a compost office and he's laughing and then they say goodbyes as Montrose leaves. And Kai then watches him and we see Kai is following him as he gets into a car. Kai gets her own car and follows him to a port. And we see Montrose hitting an envelope of cash to a security guard and he leaves. And Kai opens a sorry. Oh, sorry. A shipping container. And sees it contains trash. So something's like uh, she's like something's not right here. They're like, eh, what's going on? Yeah, kind of like they they know something's up. Yeah. So Kai sees Montrose leave, and we see a logo of a red owl with the words "Katorn Limited" on the container. Then we see Alex is at the resorts now wearing purple shades and a tan suit jacket. And it's golden hour. Which I must say, CK looks damn good in golden hour. I have to agree with that. So, and I'm blushing again. Crap. So Ernesto that goes on comms and they're like testing the comms. Ernesto is in a hotel room on his laptop, like the headphones on and like the mics on. And Ernesto's like, who do you think this guy is? 
Nalex, he's like actually by like it's one of those like poles that like it's not like it's ocean front but it's not like the ocean water like it's the pool but like yeah. it's connected to the ocean but like yeah it's a, it's not. like a tide pool or something yeah which i would freaking love pretty. to go to one of those like it'd be fun get me like a daiquiri <laughs> and like give me some like music I would yeah, be like girl in heaven. Hang out. Yep, I would need a book, a daiquiri, and just some good music and a place to hang out. Yeah, that's all you need. Warm. That's all yep. you need. Yep. <laughs> I'm glad you agree on that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I w- I just wish I had the money to go to one. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> and Alex. This is, Alex is saying that hopefully it's just some liquid thug trying to throw his weight around. Ugh. And then um, Ernesto sees on the security footage that Montrose arrived. And you see, like, in the camera footage, Montrose is uh, Montrose goes in and you see Kai pull up right behind him. And then Alex reports that cavalry is coming. Which is funny because actually the next episode we're going to be doing at the podcast is a leverage episode, the bank shot job, which, you know, has the line. Well, ma'am, we'd be the cavalry. Which I see you, Dean. I see you, Dean Devlin. And we'll get more into that if, that later. But. <laughs> and so that reminds Alex that if he gets in any trouble, the code word is. And Alex is like, yeah, avocado. I got it. <sighs> avocado is where. Then big guy and small guy Enjoy. walk up. <laughs> walk up as Alex puts the sunglasses away. And big guy says he's on his way. Alex, like, he has to, like, clear his throat and puts back on the Spanish accents. Like, I'm in, in no rush. Uh, then a waitress comes over with a drink on a tray, and Alex is steps it's like, gracias, bonita. Which translates to thank you, beautiful, in Spanish. And she just walks away, and so do the goons, which... I want CK to call me Benita. <laughs> Ernesto <Same>. is, wa- <laughs> is watching the security footage as Montrose is heading to the meet. And Ernesto spots Kai and leaves like, like Kai. And then Franz like, shit, you could blow this. And then, so he leaves the hotel room and Kai heads to the main lobby while Montrose is flirting with some women. And then Montrose then walks up to Alex and Kai sees it's Alex and is like Walker? And then Ernesto like like he grabs her like he he like comes from behind, like he grabs her shoulder turns her to him like puts his finger up to his like puts his finger up to his mouth. And then it's like, like, like nodding to like, like he's like basically like, telling her quiet, be quiet, like quiet, follow me, let's go. <laughs> then there's like the come on finger, as much as it's beside Alex. It's basically Ernesto stopped Kai from blowing the up. So much as says he hears Alex is a man that's trying to mess with his business. Alex says, no, he's messing with his business. And he runs the area where his two compadres, where he met his two compadres and has no idea who Montrose is. And Montrose is like, 
Who am I, Mr. Caballos? And then snaps his fingers. And a red laser dot appears on Alex's chest. It could kind of seem like tense up a bit. As Macho says, he's the man in charge. As three more dots appear. So there's four total dots. And But you can see that like he looks up. Like he's trying to like calculate almost where the sniper is. Because you can do that. Yeah. Depending on like the angle of like where the dot is. There's a lot of, there's a whole lot of math. I don't know. Because I suck at math. It's a whole lot of math, basically. (laughs) Math and physics. But uh, Kai and Ernesto go back to the hotel room and Kai is like, what the hell is going on? Ernesto tells Kai she's about to walk in the middle of a sting and it's a good thing you saw her coming. And Ernesto sits down. Kai's like, you're investigating Montrose? This is like, you know him? Yep. And Kai's like, not exactly. And she sits down and puts on headphones. Alex tells Montrose, still not dropping the accent. That there's no need to pre- for theatrics and to tell his snipers to stand down. And Alex or Ernesto has his headphones on. And him and Kai are back at the hotel room like, did you just say, like, did you just say snipers? I said more than one. Like, Alex, are we in an avocado situation? <laughs> Because they're like, oh shit. Alex, how are we in an avocado situation? It's like, do you need help? And then Alex is like, tell us Montrose that he just wants to talk. And after a tenth second, Montrose snaps his fingers again and the dots the dots go away. So Montrose asks kind of, Al- Yeah, they kind of like panic. Yeah. Not hearing like, him say anything. Like, this dude. <laughs> so Montrose asks what Alex wants to talk about, and Alex says he wants to know why. Yeah, sure. Why Montrose and his goons, um, or, or as Alex calls him, Pandieros. Or Pandieros. Which is just Spanish for like a goon or a thug. Who chases down his clients. Matros asks like what clients. And Alex is the chefs. Like the one. Uh, they tried attacking today. They are under his protection. And Montrose says he's afraid his clients are getting away of his plans. And Alex is like, and what plans are we talking about, senor? And Montrose says that's his business. And back at the room, I turn to Nestor like, Mr. Caballos? <laughs> and she just like puts her head on her or puts her hand on her face <laughs> and it's like oh great mm. yeah, that was funny mm-hmm. so then Alex points out that if he's clearing out land it must be a development a, a development maybe another beach resort then Kai t- then tells Alex that she doesn't think it's a resort they're talking about as she followed him up to the docks. And Alex then corrects himself and is like, but that wouldn't explain the shipping containers. And then the draw came comes back out. <laughs> Which is like, excuse me, how did you? 
different Alex's that went like the ones Montrose expected earlier today, the ones filled with trash. Yeah. Oh my god. It is midnight where I'm at. <laughs> it's eleven o'clock here. Oh my god. Okay. So the the container is filled with trash. And then another waitress comes by with the drink. Then she has her hand on like puts her hand on Alex's chest as she leaves. Which uh I must say she does look pretty pretty because she's in this like nice white floral bikini top with like the dark blue boy shorts and uh roll at number seven. Am I right? Hey. <laughs> We've all we've all thought about breaking rule seven at some point. <laughs> Anyways so. though. Kind of then explains you some or, but don't actually break rule seven. Okay. No, one actually, we've had this discussion. It goes both ways, people. I know rule yeah. number seven. We all know rule number seven. If you forget, rule number seven says you can't touch the women, but they can grab whatever they want to. But that goes both ways. All right, so. Continuing on. So Kai then ex explains just some at the Capitol and the police station. Alex tells, Alex tells Montrose he knows he's been taking meetings with Rosales and Ocampo, then asks why a Canadian businessman would be doing shipping in tons of trash to the Philippines while simultaneously clearing out businesses in low income areas and cozying up the politicians as he stands up. And the draw is still coming through. <laughs> and then Alex tells Montrose his guess is he's clearing the land for a dump. And Montrose like takes this second like like Mr. Caballos. Alex is like, I know you've been funding. Oh my god, oh my god. it is getting late. <laughs> And Alex is like, I I know also know you've been funding a compost campaign, so when he is governor, he will give you the permits needed. He will give you the permits needed for you to complete your conversion. My trust is it was wait, if it was Mr. Caballos. What do you think what do you think I'd be willing to do to keep that information quiet? And all he does is like lift his hands to like go to snap his fingers to get us is like like before you kill me do you want to hear why your plan's going to fail? As he sits back down. And Kai's like, What are you do what are you up to, Alex? <laughs> like, read us in here. And Watch just puts his hands down. And it's like, enlighten me. Alex reveals that a combo can't win. Which I was like, why not? Alex reveals that the governor is fixing the election. And the draw comes out again. Yep. And which I was asks how he knows that. And Alex reveals he works for her. And the chefs pay him to operate in Cebu. He's merely a middleman, and she's the real crime boss. And there's also a shot of, like, Kai kind of looking impressed, and Ernesto is smiling. Yeah. I saw that. Like, it was very subtle. It was like, mm. they're actually impressed with him. Yeah. That's a surprise. And Ale yeah. And Alex adds that, fortunately for Montrose, He's grown tired of the scraps that are given to him by his employer. 
and much as like and what does that, that mean alex says that means that for the right praise he could work for montrose and he like smiles and chuckles and montrose asks how we can help him alex asks montrose if he's ever fixed a fixed ele election which does have to speaking of bank shot job the next mm -hmm. leverage episode we're doing does that not have the same energy of Nate's going like Barker. Have you ever robbed a bank that's being robbed? <laughs> yep. Same energy. Mm. Literally the same energy. I am kind of hoping that like either in redemption season two or almost paradise season two there's some more crossover yes like something more specific than just the meditation tapes like connecting because I think that, like, I'm sorry, I think that would be freaking hilarious if they actually like, like on, canonized like on the, the stone triplet theory. Yeah, kind of like what they did with the episode on Psycho. It's like, oh, I knew a team in Boston that did it in like five minutes. <laughs> but uh, see, Psycho is like also that. a show on leverage. Yeah, and it's like, they're like, we uh, technically, like, they exist in the same universe, which is hilarious. Technically, Stargate exists in Leverage. The universes are technically part of the same universe. And because, apparently, for the, like, the season five, when they're doing, like, the flashback of, like, what they've been doing, or... I think Elliot was there was supposed to be some flashback of Elliot coming through a Stargate portal. <laughs> and one of the um not only is there the is that the Judas chalice when they're like looking through Sophie's stash, which technically probably means librarians exist in the leverage. In the universe. Same, you know, yes. I mean that would make sense. And there's also a picture of, I think, a piece of the Stargate. There's a bit of the Stargate amongst Dubenage's things. Or Latimer's yes, things. There so, is, you know. I think, yeah. Because originally they were going to have a scene of Elliot coming out of the Stargate portal to show that, like, Elliot, like, was working with the Stargate, which is going to be the whole like first contact when he's like, you don't know, never know when you're going to have to fight an alien. <laughs> but I, I, I don't think they, I don't know, like, why that never happened. Kind of like copyright issues or something. There, I think there was some. I don't know exactly what it was. But at least we got many, many Star Trek references. Yes. <laughs> Which I'm still... Um, I still... <laughs> because in Doctor Who, because technically Doctor Who exists in yep. Leverage 2. So, now, Mark Shepard plays the character on Doctor Who... Yep. Which and means like Hardison would have seen it. <laughs> so. Yeah. And so I just imagining, also, like, that, because I imagine it was like Hardison Parker and Elliot begrudgingly watching it because Hardison forced him to. Yep. And yeah, maybe like, they night see that like, episode, they it. see the episode. There, it's like um, 
it was. It was like the impossible astronaut. I know. That I, that's one of the episodes. I don't remember the other one, but. Yeah, it was one of the earlier episodes. I can't remember. I know it was during. Um, it was during 11. I know that. Yep. And it was during the whole silence thing, too. And Ugh. I just imagine, though, that, like, Hardison, like, Hardison Parker and Elliot are all watching that. And then they, like, you see Mark Shepard's character, um, Canton Everett Delaware the third, And they just look. Hardison immediately, like, grabs the remote and pauses it. And then they're all taking bets on why they're like like Sterling? <laughs> and then they're all taking bets as to why Sterling ended up in an episode of Doctor Who. Oh, uh, that would be freaking hilarious. If they make some like joke of that in season two, I want them to bring Mark Shepard back. He said he would if we annoyed him enough, if we annoyed Dean enough about it. Yeah, but sadly, that didn't work yet. Well, we don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I think someone wants your attention. Oh, I think, I think my dad's home is why my dogs are barking. Okay. All right. Continuing on. Sorry. So, Alex walks into the hotel room. And Kai tells Alex he can't fix an election. Alex is like, we're not fixing anything. What was funny is, as he's saying, like, thing, Kai pulls the chin fluff off. <laughs> and when it's when it, he, like, it's like, we're not fixing any thing. And he has to, like, close his eyes and shake his head. Yep. And I said, that was legit pain because it was That's literally stuck saying. to his yeah his chin fuzz which is hilarious which <laughs> I giggled a lot harder than I should have I don't know why I didn't like the chin fluff I just didn't it looked too fake you could tell that it, it was did. fake so Kai then sits back, back down and, at, and says like we don't know anything about, about this guy and like all we have is a name but Ernesto is able to find him on the laptop and reveals his name is Paul Montrose and his business visa lists him as a lobbyist a former political consultant out of Canada and Alex That's explains amazing. that Montrose is a corporate <laughs> fixer because like I've heard of a fixer before but not a corporate fixer fixer lawyer <laughs> <laughs> You saw, you you knew, you knew what my face was. <laughs> uh, our Mr. Wilson. He's a, well, he's a corporate fixer lawyer. Yep. There's a difference. Pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Uh, just in this context. Yeah. Yeah. And Alex explains that when a multi-billion dollar international corporation wants to bend the law to get what they want, they send somebody like Montrose, and he functions as a go-between for companies who don't want to get their hands dirty. And this is like, according to the data, this is according to the database, Montrose has been accused of working for a blood diamond mining company in Africa, an Amazon Deforestation Corporation, and other bad guys. Alex is like, we need to find out who he, wor who he works for. This is like, I have no idea. It's like, I have no idea. Montrose has been off the radar for a while. And Kai then, re 
reveals the shipping containers or she uh, or she tells the boys that she remembered something down at the docks and there were shipping containers with the novel logo on it with the novel logo on it and we get a flashback to kai finding the logo earlier so kai searches the name and reveals that Katorn limited Katorn limited has turned coastal areas into recycling dumps all over the world like china brazil argentina now it's like and now Cebu and cause like poisoning marine life. This is like destroying the community. Now it's like not if we stop them first. It's like how are we gonna do that? Alex says that guys like Montrose, they think that everyone can be bought and that thinks everyone is as corrupt as he is. Kai says they just need to prove it. Alex points out the problem is that he's an intermediary and it's almost impossible to link him back to any of the companies that he works for. And if it gets caught, they just send in another guy and the whole thing starts over again. I was like, well, I do have a feeling you have a mostly illegal plan to stop him. Which Alex he usually does. Yep. So we go to the Capitol building and it's now election day. Montres, Alex, and the goons are at the back of the SUV. Montres is that it's like Mr. Gabayos, the plan. Alex takes off his glasses, or takes off his shades, sorry, and tells Montrose that working for the governor, he has access to her security cards, which allows him into any locked area of the capital. Montrose is like, explain how this is going to work. Sorry. So Alex explains that in the Philippines, absentee votes are manually tabulated and with the military base on the island, there are enough absentee balance to tip any election. And like says that Governor Rosales has the power of her office to change the rules of the election. And the hand count for the providence happens inside the Capitol. And what Joe's makes a comment about how that's smart. Alex also reveals he has a man in the tabulation room. And in the last election, he swapped the ballots with enough fake votes to get Rosales reelected. You good? Yeah. Okay. And what Joe says this time they use these fake ballots. And it looks inside the bag containing the fake containing the ballots. Alex is to ensure Compo comes out on top. Chris asks Alex if you're sure about this. Alex puts his sunglasses back on and looks through the top of the map Montrose. And like, just let me know when the van arrives. It then gets out. And then you see I'm trying to like go through this kind of quickly because we're way past the time we should <laughs> we're going way too long up for this so we see alex coming out of the elevator with big guy behind him there they're walking through the halls as we see the truck coming alex goes on the walkie like asking how they're doing and my trust reports is on his way as we see a man hitting the truck Alex is early kidding as and he's like pound like pounding on the door to like open it up. Alex and big guy come up the hall hallway beside a set of stairs. Alex switches over an arrow. So it looks like the ballot counting is down the hall instead of up the stairs. And see the man walking inside. With the bags and Alex is standing outside a room 
Anne comes out of the elevator and heads to the room. Alex lets him in and heads in behind and knocks him out as Big Guy comes over. Alex steps back out and Montress and Small Guy come up with duffels and Alex lets him in. So Montress takes his jacket off and Alex grabs the yellow vest off the man in the hat and Alex tosses the hat to Montrose and then helps Montrose put the vest on, make it a quip that Montrose looks good in a hat and not everyone can pull it off. Like, he needs fashion advice from you, Alex. <laughs> it shows, it's just like, just get on with it. Alex is like, okay. And they grab the duffels, and Alex and Montrose walk out. Alex switches back over the sign, and they walk up the steps. And Alex and Montrose walk out. Or no, take, sorry, they take the ballots into the counting room, telling the guides the absentee balance, and you'd see him in three years. And they leave, <laughs> but the camera reveals that it's Bayani. So Alex and Montrose come back to the room, and Alex says, that for Montrose's first election tampering, he's done well. Then asks about payment. Montrose says, sorry, when it comes to manipulating democracy, he finds it better not to leave loose ends. <laughs> Montrose <laughs> grabs the bags, says he'll dispose of them, then orders his goods to kill Alex. And Alex is like, wait, wait going to kill me in a government building. And she's like, oh, no. We're going to knock you out and then kill you somewhere else. You'll never be found. The big guy, big guy, or Montrose leaves. And big guy has a taser in his hand. And it's like Circle and Alex um, putting his back to the door. And the guy like sets up the taser a couple of times. Alex ends up back into small guy. He grabs his shoulder, but Alex sort of throws him beside big guy. He hasn't dropped the accent yet and asks like if they're sure they want to do this because the last time they almost got slow roasted. Because like, yeah, there's only one of you. And then Alex is drop like drops the accent and takes off the chin fluff and is like, Yeah, about that. <laughs> like, he shakes his head a bit. Then we see that the guy that Alex actually knocked out is actually Ernesto. So, Ernesto was the one bringing in the duffels. <laughs> Sorry. Whoopsies. And then... Ernesto says there's still two of them. Small guy goes after Ernesto. But then he gets knocked the fuck out with the kick. <laughs> like, he goes down hard. Yeah. And I was like, like oh, he gets head hurt. He gets, like, kicked, goes down, and stays out. And I was like, Oh, he got knocked the fuck out. <laughs> then the big guys just standing there like, uh. Okay. And Alex has his glasses off now and he's like, I could have taken them both myself. It's like, like the time to get on the scooter. Alex is like, it's the beetle dog egg. No, so he like puts his glasses and like the on his shirt, it's like, we'll talk later. <laughs> it's funny, is Alex yeah. then turns to the big guy who's standing there, still like, why? He's standing there, like, like this is the taser. It just standing there, like, arms out like that. 
And Alex is like, what about you, big boy? How are you feeling? Because like, nah, I'm good. And Alex like grabs the taser from him. And then like they With sort of like no resistance. Yeah. And then they just like nod to each other. Alex is like, this is um big guy's chest. Alex is like both his hands on the taser and just freaking drives it into his chest. Remind you of anyone? I, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> Which is big guy. Then he goes on the ground. Ness is like, did you really have to do that? Now Alex is like, that was for Bayani. And then he just like, and he, so like now yeah, he's like on the ground. Says the bottom. But like he tastes yep. him again. I was just like, what was that one for? It's like, for fun. <laughs> and they're going to leave, which I really wish they would have had just like a moment where they're leaving. That's just like, give me, like snatches the taser out of Alex's it's hand. Like, like, give me that give thing. Me that. Yep. Kind of like what like Alex, Elliot, like did Elliot Parker. does to Barker. Like, I'm, starting to, I'm starting to like tasing people that bad. He's like, Rips it out of her hand. Give me that. <laughs> he thought he was sneaky with that. I caught it. He, like, wait a he's minute. He's not as sneaky as he think he is. I saw what you did, Dean. I saw it. And I approve. We then see Montrose outside the Capitol building. He heads back to the car and opens the trunk. But he catches the inside of the bag and realizes there's just trash inside. Uh, then comes from behind him. It's like, feels bad, doesn't it? Being used, taken advantage of, it pisses you off, right? Then Ernesto comes from like the other side of the van or the car, sorry. Which was like, what's going on? Ernesto says that election, election tampering is a serious crime on the island. And which was like, I didn't do anything. It was hell him. Like Alex. And Alex just like, comes from behind. It's like, who, me? I was like, that's not what the camera saw, man. Like, you're going to have to explain to a judge why you were inside. Like, delivering fake absentee votes. And which was just like, what? you going to arrest really me now? Used. This is like yeah, he was like really confused. Yeah, this is like he was. This says no, and a one-way trip back to Canada is the only thing he'll get out of the Philippines. Because like, save us all a big headache, leave the island and never come back. And which is like, you're afraid, like you know I can get out of this. Because like, oh, you could stay, but then we'll arrest you. Maybe your high priced lawyers can get you out. Or maybe it was some or maybe something happens to you in the jail before that. And Spidey Zox just kinda like puts the teeth together like when doubt it. And Kai says if she was him, she would take the she would, wouldn't take the risk. It tells when she has to take the ticket and next time they won't be so nice. Which I think was a leverage, not Nigerian job. When Nate literally says to Debenich, "Next time we won't be. Next time I won't be so nice." <laughs> Sorry. So, Kai, Kai and Ernesto leave, and then Alex tells Montrose he lied. And hats aren't a good look for him as he takes the ball cap off. <laughs> and leaves. Which is then gets in the car. Then he sees Rosales is pulled up. And Watchos puts the cap back on and grabs a gun out of the glove compartment and gets out. 
Rizala sent it to her office, put in the, the box on the table. So now we're back to the beginning. Yep. Rizala said to her office, put in the box on the table, sitting in her desk, saying this campaign's going to kill her. Then the camera spins, revealing Montrose, holding the revolver and putting it at Rizala, saying it's time to make a deal. It's time they made a deal. Sorry. Rizal then asks if Montrose intends to shoot her. Montrose says no. He intends to make her an offer. And this time she was going to listen. Sorry, I'm like, sorry, I'm like really sweating. <laughs> Rizal says she's all ears. Montrose puts the gun away and tells an officer $100,000 in US dollars, which is enough to buy here every last Shikoi on the country, as he knows. Shows her the money. Rizala declines. I'm just like, how much do you want? Rizala looks at the money again and says she doesn't think he has that kind of money. Montrose says, if he don't, the people he works for does, then offers a million dollars. Just like that. Rosales says that's a lot of money, and Montreux says he can make it happen right now, just as long as she grants the land rights and the permits, they have a deal. Rosales then writes some numbers on a piece of paper, saying it's her personal bank account and the one she uses for buyer transfers. Rosales hands in the paper, hands in the paper and Montreux asks if she's going to accept wire transfers. Rosales, sorry, Rosales hands him, or says the money spends the same, and Montreux says the money is coming from his company's account, so it has to remain private. Uh, Montreux hands the phone to Rosales, telling her to enter her routing numbers. Rosales does, and Montreux shows her the chance we went through. Rosales' phone goes off, and she sees the money went in. Rosales tells Montrose, like, pleasure doing business with you. And Montrose takes the off the cap and vest and says there are 7,000 islands in the Philippines. And they can make a lot of money together, turning every single one of them into a dump for Western waste. Rosales sits behind him, beside him on the desk. And Rizal says, they could, except you'll be in prison. And this company will be banned from ever doing business in this country again. That was sneaky. That was. And that was that moment I was like, ooh, she got some balls on her. It was like, ooh, that's impressive. Yeah. And Montrose just stands up and looks at her like, excuse me? And Rizal's like, you just bribed a government official. Oh, oh my god, sorry. You just bribed a government official and I have a record of it. And like, she shows the, like her phone, which shows the payment from Couture Limited. So now they can trace, basically. So Montrose gets pissed, saying she set him up. And Zala says she spent her whole career trying to stop people like him, people who think they can come in and destroy her country just so they can line their pockets. Patrice tells Rosales at least she'll die with the principles intact. And Montrose goes to pull the gun out on Rosales, but Kai comes behind, putting her gun at the back of Montrose's head, saying he should have used the should have used the plane ticket. And then Ernesto comes in and Kai hands Ernesto the revolver. And Kai arrests Montrose for battery bribery. And Ernesto adds extortion, 
soliciting arson and assault and battery with the t intent. Uh. Sorry. Kai continues saying that by transferring funds over international lines, Kator Limited has committed enough financial crimes to be permanently barred from operating in the Philippines. And all they needed was the paper trail. That was actually kind of sneaky on their part. It was. That was really cool. <laughs> Big Kai and Ernesto take Montrez to the cruiser outside. Which, if you think about it, this does... I've said it before with them um, leverage how Dean Devlin is insistent that the bad guys get taken down by their own sin. Which is awesome. It's like you you did this to yourself, so yeah. you're your own downfall. Which yeah. I thought was really nice. And I just I, I mean, like in a way they that, are. I like how that continued with almost paradise. Because you think about it, like, uh, like, Tio was taken down because of his own impulsiveness. And his own arrogance, I guess you could say, too. Arrogance, yeah. His own arrogance and impulsiveness. Because his impulsiveness is what caused him to agree to Alex's guilt to begin with then the impulsiveness to like take Alex to the boat and like everything was fast paced with them. Yeah, but not thinking. That caused the downfall. And then the last or the second episode with um I uh, the, the did not actually each know episode. everything. Yeah, they didn't know enough information, but they didn't make the decision to go forth with the plan anyway. Yeah. Which I thought was hilarious. And this one was sort of Montrose's own philosophy that, like, everybody can be bought. And it's, like, the one yeah. person you can't buy. It's the one that has nothing, nothing to lose. They have well, not that, but it's the from your one doubt. person yeah. he tried bribing as the one person who had, like, principles. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Hmm. So I just like okay, that Dean Devlin carried that. Yeah, and it was that kind of, it had that same arc throughout to this point, which I thought was really awesome. Mm -hmm. And it's that has that tone throughout all the episodes. Um, which mm -hmm. is really cool. <laughs> and now, can I mention the Facebook Live stuff? Because I've been itching to, like, mention it. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, and I went, we watched the Facebook, I watched the Facebook Live to, like, bring this up specifically. And it happened, I asked a question, it's like, how many times did you guys, like, crack up on set? Oh, yeah. And it was at Four minutes and five seconds. And Dean read that out loud. And the first one to answer was Art. And he like smiled at the camera. Uh, he said like CK and. It's like that. Sam. He's like quote that Christian and Sam were the ones only ones to break character. He's like. And I'm thinking uh, I don't buy it. Because <laughs> he probably did buy it knowing either. him. <laughs> yeah. And. Yeah, my stomach went from here to into my I, into out my butt. Like my heart <laughs> dropped when he read my question out loud, and I could see uh, CK like look down at the monitor and read along with him. Yeah, no, he was gone. Yeah, it's like, what are you doing? And then like I saw, no, it was Sam. Sam looked down at, at her computer yeah. screen and looked down <laughs> just briefly. No, she wasn't in that live. But, well, she. No, she wasn't One of in the, that uh, She. It would have made it. It would have been funnier if she was, because that would have been hilarious. And but Christian, yeah, Art looked Christian down. Christian had gone. Yeah, yeah he Which like is, got up briefly before that, but he did get. A I, I answer. don't know how many of you heard ever heard the "Where's Misha" song. 
And basically, it's this like entire improv song at, that was created at a supernatural convention because no one knew where Misha was. Misha Collins. Yeah, he, yeah, he was supposed to be on like on. He's supposed to go on stage a panel, for a but, panel, but yeah, didn't show up. And it was like late, so they were all like, "Where's Misha? I don't know. Where's Misha?" <laughs> And that, I that don't could know. be applied to Mark, like, in the I don't care. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> but I was yeah, doing I was my like, own version of the song. Like, yeah, the fact that, I don't yeah, know. The fact, the fact that freaking Art Acuna I answered me. He answered the question that I asked. Mm. And he read it out loud. <laughs> I was on the floor. I'm literally on the floor laughing. Oh my god. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, when that first happened, I was so red faced that I'm like, oh my god, he saw it. He saw it. And then it gets worse with the Lone Wolf episode. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, when when, when I requested I'm excited uh, to do that one. Yeah. I requested a song and he yeah, did it. He, like, does, no, it's not yeah, he did. Uh, I'm strong on my he said, yeah, I was like, yeah, he, yeah, he, he plays the little, he sings a little snippet. Baby. I love that <laughs> song. He, yeah, and then he does an actual song to that. He does, like, because uh, like, he started off he singing kinda, Lone Wolf. Yeah, yeah, and then I requested, how about Different he Kind of Night? Different he, Kind of Night. He read it. Yeah, he yeah, did. He read it. Because he busted it, out the I guitar really, and started doing. Yep. And I recognized it right when he did the upstroke. I'm like, <laughs> "Can I cut but yeah, in on the dance?" But yeah, the fact that Dean freaking read my question out loud, yeah, or answered like has me dying still. <laughs> I'm, still oh, I'm gonna okay. end up be bringing up that song at some point. I just know it. Yep. Well, I need to wait. Go to bed. I think honestly it would be the uh it'd probably be the studio job episode, but continue on. So yeah, we're almost done. We're actually almost done this time. We're gonna try I'm gonna try and speed through this. So kind of to take one trust out to the cruiser where the ballot employees all come out. And Montrose is trying to buy, like, Kai and Ernesto off. And Kai's it's like, not everybody can be, not everyone can be bought. You know, this is like, especially not when the cost is lives of good people. Right, chefs? And with Alex's help, excuse me, reveals that all of the ballot employees are the chefs. And... Basically, Montrose gets put in the cruiser, and Alex has his arm around Bayani, and Iron has to like have a fist bump. So back yeah, at the I governor's, that was, it was funny. I was like, it was really the cool, yeah. All right, so back at the governor's office, Ernesto is sitting in the chair. Is also leaning on a chair on the side of the table, and Kai's in front of her. Alex is off to the side, just rubbing his chin. Probably because it's sore from the fake the chin fluff. So Rizal tells Kai if she ever needs protecting again, she'll be the first person to call. Or she calls Rizal's calls Kai Detective Mendoza. And Kai's like, Call me Kai. Rizal's again. Yeah. Then thanks Alex for prepping around the situation. And Alex is like not really paying attention. He's like, You're welcome, Governor. And Alex's like, You didn't tell me you'd have a gun. And Alex thinks it'll help by saying, It's like, Oh, he's never going to use it. And so I was like, How did you know? Alex is just like, It's Canadian. <laughs> and they all look at each other like seriously it's like oh really we have one idiot to deal with not now we have two people that are like being like cocky 
Seriously. He's Canadian. <laughs> but then like, at that dot make that excuse. As and Ernesto are there in Kazakh the binoculars and see that the uh, barge, the Katorn Limited barge, is leaving with all the trash. And Kat Ernesto says he'd rather watch something else and that's kind of following. So now we are back at the Street Food Village and they're saying hi. And we're almost at the end. And Alex is repainting this sign to the restaurant to bring out his restaurant. Vanessa is like calls out to him, like, is it time? Alex just like he looks down and Vianney comes out and smiles and like has his thumb up and is like, it's time. So we <laughs> see them sitting at the table. Alex is bouncing his leg. And Vianney comes up with the bowl and sets a spoon, like sets the spoon against the bowl. And the server brings like a couple more bowls out for Ernesto and Viani. Alex is like, you sure about this? Ernesto nods yes. And Alex stalls by giving Viani a replacement bowl for the one he lost in the fire. And Alex like he looks at his monitor and then like takes a long sip of beer. And then finally like he's stalling. <laughs> He has to like take like some deep breaths in, takes some of the soup, and then he's like, "Oh, this is actually good." Yeah, and you can see by on his face, he's like just eagerly waiting. Yeah, he's watching him intently. He's the cutest old man. He's adorable. It's like he's so cute. And he's like, "That was just adorable." <laughs> yeah, and. He's like, and it's cute the way he's like, Vian is like, good? And Alex is like, yeah, good. Like, pats him on the back, like, amazed. Yeah. And we, you know, damn well, he cleaned the whole bowl. <laughs> oh, yeah. Definitely. So then Campo is at a press conference where he says, leader of the investigation, and in, where he, he says, as leader of the investigation, to a foreign into the foreign interferences in the Cebu election, he bravely volunteered to go undercover as Rosales' op opponent. And Rosales like, gives him a look. It, but he's happy he's like, to like, put, like, put all of his support behind Rosales and wishes her the best in the next three years. So then we go back to the gift shop where Ernesto makes a comment. They're seeing this on the TV. And Ernesto makes the comments like, is it just me or just a couple? Like, does his shoulders look bigger? And Alex asks That's if they're funny. ready and, like, Kai's there too. And Kai looks at the fish. And the marlin. Like, you <laughs> marlin, yeah. It's like, you brought this thing all the way from the United States. Alex is a good it's a good luck charm, and the three of them lift up the fish. And they step on these like wooden crates as Kai says she never took Alex for a superstitious guy. Alex says he has multitudes. It's like no way you know what that means. <laughs> Which is Alex funny. is like I do like either way I like I appreciate this. It's nice to have a Ernesto finishes by saying community. I was like, let's stick with that. <laughs> Cause yeah, I'm like basically what did another, you stuff this yeah, with? Another... <laughs> what did you stuff this with concrete? And he just looked at her like yeah. maybe. But we know what's inside of it. Or I yeah. have a theory at this point. I'm like it's really heavy. It's probably full of bricks is what my mind went to first. I'm like, mm -hmm. or something else. And I was right. It was something else. But the proud smile that they all have when they get the fish up, the marlin up. Yeah, like they got the mountain. And, they, that, and it was cute. Like proud smiles yeah, it, yeah. made me happy. 
Like, let's keep those like Alex helps Kai down. Which is such a gentlemanly thing to do, yeah. by the way. Like he grabs her wrist to like help her down. And yep. and she doesn't fight it. She yeah. Does not well, they fight all like at they all. look at it. Oh proud. Alex is funny. He's Alex got his hands on his hips. And it's just like, it's not bad. Alex says that's perfect. And Alex says that's perfect. Because like maybe we don't make such a bad team after all. <laughs> then the then the fish falls. Yeah, what's funny is Kai and <laughs> Ernesto jump drops. like jump, jump back. Alex, I'm not gonna do it. He has his hands on his hips, <laughs> eyes closed, head up. And the monitor goes off. <laughs> but you're not yeah, going to lie, a funnier it. ending would have just been like a shot at the outside of the gift shop. And you just yeah. hear Alex yelling, son of a bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry, that would have been yeah, funny. I, yeah, I, I saw as soon as his head, like he looked up and saw it move, they moved back. They would like jump back and he just goes, you can hear, you can just see the gears in his head go. Yeah. And I, I giggled. If, if that's, I how it, giggled. that's how it actually ends, it's just the monitor going off. But yeah, like I could, I could just picture his, his head hanging down, like, come on. All right, so. Like all annoyed. All right, so. Continuing on and trying to wrap this up. So, the last thing, because a lot of my behind the scenes stuff is just stuff I've either already said or just I don't think it will have enough, enough time. But the main thing is that for the Spanish accent that Christian Kane uses in this episode. Apparently, he channeled Antonio Banderas, like, Puss in Boots. <laughs> no way. That's what he said. I don't believe that. that oh, my God. <sighs> and, uh, yeah. And originally, they were actually going to... Sh- uh, have almost prior day set for Hawaii, but because as I mentioned before, Dean Devlin is half Filipino. Uh, he he had never explored that part of his heritage before, and like once they like moved it to the Philippines, it made more sense. Yeah, it felt more like homie is like yeah felt welcomed yeah which is awesome and i think this is one of the few like films i have seen where the location is a character yeah and i like that they kind of because involved the philippines as culture the heart of the show yeah yeah and the, the Filipino, culture as a culture and not just a location. It's yeah. A character all its own, which is awesome. It is, which is cool. So the only other thing I know of that like had something as a character that wasn't a person was on Supernatural, how they the um, baby. baby. <laughs> Wait. Well they, well they did a literal episode. In season eleven, called Baby. Yep, yep. That's set in season entirely 11, episode from the car. four. Yeah, yeah. From the car I knew it was season eleven. That was cool. Yep, episode four. Which is four. very interesting <laughs> to shoot, I must say. But I I do appreciate when, like, going off of yeah, these different yeah, like this. styles, like switching yeah. it up. 
you know, instead of having like, the location be a background, it's it's a character. This, so it's a char- yeah, and you can see it and feel basically you can feel the culture, mm-hmm. which is awesome. That's the thing, like Alex saying how like he came to the Philippines for the culture. Yep. And he and felt like he's almost me- like destroying that in a way. That made me think because- <laughs> the the video of when they're filming and they have it's got the drone. This is on CK's uh, Instagram. It's got the drone hovering and you just hear the roosters going like going crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> and that's what they had to deal with in the Philippines where they were filming in Cebu, which is hilarious. And I'm like in Mactan as well. And I'm like, mm. I would have like been on the floor screaming my head off because that would have been oh, so yeah. annoying but it was funny to see that and it's like it's a literal character all its own and it's which is cool i do like also how like alex like he has this sense of community now instead of being a like I said, solo being guy by himself loner. like wanting to be you know he's instead being a lone wolf, he wants to be part of the pack. Yeah. Wink, wink. Tied right into the song. <laughs> yep. Which it is kind of interesting because, well, the episode Lone Wolf actually goes more into the song because there's yeah. the beach scene, like the person who, no, the act, like the singer of the song, August Crow is saying how like he had stopped performing the song because like it was a lie in that like you know because originally someone said go look i'm a badass like i don't need anyone else but to him that was just a lie it was just he kept telling himself to keep pushing yeah everyone away yeah which i believe is the same thing that happened with alex and why he related to that song so much. A little bit, yeah, because he in his in his own way he was pushing people so that's away more due to his later, job. But yeah, that's due to his job pretty much. But yeah. That that's what was going through my head. It's like he went from just a guy being by himself to being with a team. And then now he has like this community. Again, another found family. Found family. Dane. We see you. Yeah, we see what you're doing, bud. We see what you're doing. You're trying to be sneaky. In fact, I actually called him out on it. I <laughs> know you Twitter. did. I remember I that. Yep. Yep. But I'm like, again, this that same dynamic. And I'm like, it's cool. Mm-hmm. Away with like a different cop version of a cop show, pretty much. Yeah. I don't see, like, I can, I, see, I like the trio as friends. You see, it's odd. It's, you'd almost expect, like, Kai and Alex to be, like, paired up. I mean, I guess maybe because it's, like, only season one and they're, like, still, like, figuring out how to work together. Like, yeah, I can't like, really see anything more to Alex and Kai. Well, I mean, than just like best friends slash siblings. It's kind of cool that like, yeah, um, they have like that friendship kind of dynamic kind of going on in this episode. Yeah. Although in the so next it does episode, become they get a, a bit, bit more, more closer like, together. Brother, sisterly a bit. Yeah, because at one point, Kai actually gets to be a little bit more vulnerable around Alex and actually let him in and six. see why the way she, she's the way that she is. So yeah, six. which is really, really cool. But yeah, it's... But I do, I must cool say, I do appreciate because I feel like a different... Sh- version of the show would have like 
would have like Alex pining for Kai. Like the uber confident, uber the confident robot. and competent cop. You don't need no man, but then like all of a sudden like realizes she needs Alex. Like I don't like that trope. Yeah. Because it I like implies that, that like, with, you need uh, someone more of like a friendship in order to type like of trope right now. Yeah. yeah. But also, you don't get. It's like more of a lot, like lot of just male female friendships in general. Like yeah, you don't see a lot like, of. That's kind of. Yeah, it's kind of unheard of. It is a bit um, because usually, shows, but... in shows that have like portray male and female friendships usually It'll lead to more of like, like a romantic relationship usually like on. the plot like the twist or like the one of the points is like the sex part gets in like <laughs> or was it saying like the sex part of the relation, like the sex part, like ruins the relationship, and so they have to decide, yeah. like, like, do we explore this or do we... having it just, having the it man complicates like, things yeah. too much? Yeah, instead of Which, having it just be now, you can do non uh, non romantic uh, friendship. You can have instead of well, having them. You can have both non romantic. Male and female friendships. Or that can go into like like a brother sister dynamic kind of thing. Yeah. But you could also do like male female friends as friends turned lovers. But I think the way to do if you want to do it properly, which I've both of my stories I've written have like Male female friendships that turn into relationships. Yeah, but the which key, I actually like I like that. It's like building it up well, that, a little bit more slowly. But it so sometimes it goes too quickly. Not having the character's identity fully wrapped up in the other. Yeah, that's that's true. Like have like which is, I think, what is interesting with, like, my, what I, what I try doing with my stories is, especially with Evelyn, or with Ev Mahoney, is, like, I knew I wanted her to be, like, Alex's love interest. And this idea that, like, yeah, she had a crush on Alex, and but, like, she never, like, did anything with that and just protected him because she wanted to make sure that he got home to the people she did know she did know he loved and also like by the time she realized like she could do something like he was already married and had a daughter yeah it was too late and she didn't want to like hurt Alex by like screwing up his family. Yep. So she she waited. She held on to that she emotion did. until it was it, it Which was I think safe. makes it more interesting. Yeah. Cause it's like it has that potential to go romantic, but then it doesn't. It's like Yeah. Oh, that's why. And then like having Especially with mine, I, like, it started off with, like, yeah, it's very clear that, like, these two are friends and they're, like, really in sync. But, like, Evelyn has her own, like, values and her own identity outside of just being with Alex. Like, she's competent in her own, right? Like, yeah, she protects Alex and a lot of her, like, focus is spent on Alex. But that's because, like, she cares about him. And it's part of that, yeah. like, like, her empathetic and protective nature. And it's the same thing with 
kind of with Alex. Like, Alex does, like, treat her as an equal in... Yeah, because they're partners, and you have to have that balance. That they were Um, partners for 15 years. For a very long time. Yeah. It's like... But, yeah, it's like... I mean, it's like Natasha. It's like my uh, OC Natasha and Elliot when they first meet. They kind of start out as friends, and then slowly build up the trust best. because she's she's an outsider to their group. Um, first off, and then they it took them, it took them like about, I would say probably about five chapters in mm-hmm. to build that trust, mm-hmm. which in my mind was five years. Mm-hmm. And then it slowly built from there. And then toward the end, they finally figured that they wanted more. Yeah. Because he felt like he could trust her. Yeah. Because they both That's have the thing. Like, you have to build it up and you have to have both. Like, if you're having a male-female relationship, friends to lovers story, you got to make sure you have, you develop both characters separately before you put them together or else it's just gonna yeah. look like the one char- like was- the fe- usually this is the female character the female character is only exclusively there for the male love interest yeah that's and I've read that's stories not like that good storytelling like yeah it's like it seems rushed and it's like yeah. that doesn't match up with what I'm thinking Which, in my head but okay it's Whatever you want to do. Kind of goes into, like, going into a bit of redemption, speaking of, like, having Ali and Maria. Yeah. As much as, like, I liked them together, it felt like it was rushed. And oftentimes it did feel rushed, and it was like, Like, they didn't develop Maria that much as her own character. Yeah, it was it was very, like, superficial. Like, I get time restraints and having a five-man yeah. band. Yep. I get that. So it's I'm hoping like, that's what season two fixes. Yeah, it's like... Like, it's... Well, to, to bring... Because to I can bring see up, them... Yeah, to bring up uh, what... CK said about Elliot um, back in on um, a interview. He's like, "Well, Elliot's the tin man. He's looking for a heart, but it's unattainable." Yeah. Even now, the thing is in redemption. See, yeah, the way I look at it is Elliot does have a heart, but it's been broken, and but it's been like broken in different ways so many times. Yeah, that he like needs he to like re, like he needs to rebuild it almost. Yeah, I think is he what it is. Is he's been torn down. The, yeah, he's, he's been, been torn like, down so many, so many times, times in different ways. And one of which was when he lost Nate, which was a father figure to him. The things, or like a father brother, or like a mentor that, yeah, like, like a brother, a mentor brother slash brother slash father brother, figure. Yeah. That he could look up to, a teammate that he could look up to and trust, dies yeah. and disappears. Yeah. It's heartbroken. So I'm hoping that's just it. more season two. Yeah. He needs to have, he needs to work on him. He needs to work on himself yeah. before he can love somebody. But I think but they, it won't the route they could do know. with like the Maria, with like ha- the aftermath of the Elliot Maria relationship is having Elliot. Like, realize that, like, yeah, like, I can't, I guess I can, like, open myself up more. And I can, yeah. like, be redeemed and I can, like, be good. Well, I Because mean, even in, like, before... redemption, he still, like, doesn't look at, at, at himself as good. Yeah, so. he's like, he's like, what? Christian said, "Is like, yeah, he would, ne- he'll, he'll, he will never be clean of what he did, and what yeah. Elliot said. He's like, I will never be clean of what I did. I took lives. I'll never yeah. be clean of that. But, but, it, 
what Maria there's, was essentially doing for need, Elliot was being was like taking the yeah you are being good. a yeah it's like there's still and there's the a good man inside did, of that brokenness yeah like you're still a good man Elliot and yeah he's like he just, he's learning like you're good to enough. let go of that baggage yeah so I think that would be an interesting route to do with that. The two, I'm gonna say second season, I think it might be interesting. Just like second season of Almost Paradise, going back to Almost Paradise. I think it might, speaking of love interest, I think it, I think it would be interesting to see uh, other El Alex's ex wife. Like Alex's yes, ex-wife like, to find out like the type of who, women, woman yeah, that Alex he was would drawn date. to. <laughs> yeah, because that like that would be interesting to see. That'd be fun to see. Or like, cause I can't really see. And I guess I could see Alex having a new relationship. Maybe. But I also kind of don't. I mean, he's kind of. I don't like know if that's just said, because like, I have my story. I mean, it's so like 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 having Emma's kind of, love interest. Kind of, yeah, it's kind of like well, the way that I think of it, with Alex Walker and also Elliot, they're both lone wolves. They don't need a pack to they be are. happy. Yeah. yeah. To bring back the lone wolf song. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Though Elliot, do I think with Elliot is he actually did need a pack? He eventually figures out as a case, not so bad to be kind of yeah. by myself, but Though also have Alex, somebody I can rely on. I think is kind of figuring like, that out like, a little bit. Like maybe like I don't necessarily like have to be a part of like a team. Or any, like I don't have to be a but part of I a pack per se. But I can have people I can go to. And, like, I can still help trust if I need people. it. Yep. And, like, I have, I do have people I can cool. trust. So, similar uh, arcs, but different paths. I think would yeah, be a good like, way to well, describe so, it. Yes. The way that I would describe it is like similar arcs, but different ways of approaching it, which I thought was cool. Yeah. And because I've mentioned before about how like both like in terms of the difference between like Elliot and Alex, how Elliot has like Elliot, like his like Elliot sort of lost his heart. And now he has, he's like trying to slowly rebuild it. Yeah. Like With they both, Alex, they both lost it's his something. Spirit. Yeah. Is, yeah, Alex is, it's his he's spirit. He's trying to figure out uh, how to replace that. And slowly. now he has to sort of figure out how to replenish himself and how to heal, which is kind of like his arc season one is yeah him like like realize that like he can like trust people and he like can like he could heal and just learning how to do that And kind of learning how he himself works. Or relearning himself. How he himself works. Because like Alex saying how like. It's real life that stresses me out. And how he's focused on a case. And. 
But it's not always that like he necessarily needs the adrenaline. It's about control, partially. Yeah, it's like well, when he's on the case, he can control what he can he control does factors. And how he and when he's undercover, he can yep. control the story he's telling. Real yeah, life, but he has in no real control life, he over. can't. Yep. Like he has no control kinda, over. Kind of like. Kind of like what's happening in my life. <laughs> I feel like Alex yeah. right now is like, that's why I make my character feel like crap half the time. Yeah, well, I also interpret Alex's journey as letting go and moving on. Yep. Is Alex's sort of journey is he's, as you kind of see, he's still like, he's fixated on what was. Instead of what is and what can be. Yeah, like he's fixated on like his checks and um, the small things like instead of the big his picture. Case is doing the job. Fixated on like protecting himself by like becoming almost hyper aware, which that is a part of PTSD is hyper awareness. That's a symptom not a lot of people talk about with PTSD, but it is a symptom. Is hyper awareness. Which is what happens with Alex. Yep. And we saw that evident in the first episode. And even so, like this episode, he. Like, he saw Bayani getting choked. His, like, first instinct, analyze the situation, get Bayani help. Like, stop Bayani mm -hmm. from getting hurt. Like, that's what he was thinking of. So, yeah. That's... Uh, it's also sort of what I'm trying to go through too. Is like letting go of like the things that have happened and like moving on to like new things. Cause <laughs> so, I said, did you before I kind of start on my ending? Did you have any more notes? Nope. I've gone on almost mine. four and a half hours. So. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna start wrapping this up. So before I actually do sort of wrap up the ending, though, uh, one thing I was I started this at the beginning of this episode, but something I want to mention: if you are watching the video, basically I record or I. When I do these, I'm in my bedroom. And as you, uh, as you can see, my room is basically empty. <laughs> and I don't know if you can see behind me. But there are a shit ton of boxes. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can. Yeah. There's a whole bunch. Shit ton of boxes. And there's more behind my bed. And there's a lot more in my living room. But. Uh, I. So I am moving it to my first apartment here. Next Saturday. So that's why my room's empty is because I have all my stuff packed and I'm going to be moving to my new apartment Saturday, next Saturday. So that means that there will be no stream next week. As I'm going to spend, because usually it takes me the whole week to get my notes done and like do the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. So in order for me to 
focus on getting everything ready to move and that I am there will not be an episode next week but the week after which should theoretically be the ninth the eighth sorry the eighth <laughs> on july 8th we will be back and we are going to be talking leverage season one episode five. Oh, Big that's shot, funny you know you, you know what i just realized Hmm. When we come back, it's literally the the day before the premiere of Redemption, the anniversary. Because it, it premiered on the 9th. It did appear on the 9th. Literally the day before. That's pretty cool. I just realized that. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of a happy note to I'm end hoping on. Hoping by then we'll also have some more. Yeah. Well, That'd be fun. Yeah. So. Yeah, we'll be back in a couple weeks talking that episode. Hopefully. <laughs> and hopefully yep. you'll. Oh, I'll get and, to show y'all yeah, my. It's gonna. It's gonna be so crazy and so funny. It, it will be. And also. Right. Yeah, I still got stuff I got to do for to be in. So that's another reason why I'm taking the week off. Is because I got so like I got some last minute stuff I got to make sure I have. I got going to try applying for jobs. Um, Because so, all the things technically. Yes. Yeah, it's all the things. So, and basically Friday, essentially Friday night is when, uh, we're going to like load up almost everything in the U-Hole. So that's why, and Saturday I'm going to be like unpacking. <laughs> so, yeah. It, it's definitely going to be interesting because it's going to be my first apartment. And I've never lived by myself before. So. You'll be fine. I know. It's just weird. All right. So <laughs> that is going to end this episode today. I would like to thank our parent company, Navco.org, our electrical consultants, westpasystems.com. There's my website, kaylasantelacton.com. And you can follow me on Twitter at MissMovieFan underscore 67. And from there, you can also get on my TikTok page, too. I'll need to add that for next time. Yep. You could follow Alex on Insta at Alex Cooper seven two four one, and on Twitter at Alex the underscore Alley Cat. Where you'll you most likely see me our on, shenanigans. Yeah, shenanigans, and also on, you can look me up on TikTok under the same name as my Twitter, which I post a lot of random crap on there. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Well, actually, lately I've been posting oh, I know you do. stuff about this stream. But I will probably be doing something. I do have a video planned that I want to do for, like, when I move. Like, film, like, a bedroom, like, all my stuff. And then, like, film in my new place once I get everything all unpacked. <laughs> I can't wait to see some of your OC stuff come back. That's going to be fun. And you're I know. 
Yeah, my AC stuff. Yeah, so. Yeah, because I have. I've kind of been taking a break from writing because I finished the last chapter of my almost paradise fic, Finding Paradise. Finding Paradise, which you could find on AO3 under Miss Movie. Because I finished the episode, or I finished the chapter based on the episode, Something Walker This Way Comes. And there's no episodes of uh, I was paradise out yet. So I'm kind of Keyword, have to wait yet. on that. <laughs> yet. Nope. Keywords yet. There because will be. If, there will be eventually. So, because I'm trying to remember the timeline. Because So right now, uh, they're shooting season two of Leverage Redemption. Which, mm-hmm. theoretically, should be at some point be mm-hmm. done filming by August. October, maybe, or November? Is when they're all because mm-hmm. August mm-hmm. is when, yeah, because August is when almost paradise starts shooting. Yep, so almost paradise season two starts shooting. So, yep, so they have I'm the hoping of this month. redemption's released sometime in October. Yeah, they have the rest of this month and then uh, the rest of July. Yeah, and I'm hoping. Yeah, and I'm just hoping that at some point here soon we get a trailer. (laughs) Because theoretically, (laughs) that would be, you know what I just realized? What? It would be cool if they released the trailer for Leverage Redemption Season 2 on the one year anniversary. A redemption. Yes. That's, that would be cool. That would or be happy. since it's Monday's Christian's birthday, they're releasing on his birthday. Either one would be cool. Either one I'll accept. All right. So I'd be happy with either. That should be everything. So, oh, crap. Why? Oop. I think, um, come on. There we go. So I'm trying to end the broadcast, but my mouse is dead. <laughs>